the Python Discord Summer Code Jam 2020. Uh, with me, I've got uh, Ves Sapa, one of the co-owners of the community. Hey, Ves. Hello, German. And uh, I've got uh, uh, Kyle Stanley, core developer for CPython, and one of our moderators, known as Arrows. Hello. How are you doing, Kyle? Doing good. How are you? <laughs> I am excellent, as always. Yeah. We are going to uh, start off um, reviewing all of the participants in the jam. First, I just want to say a few words about what the code jam actually is. So, um, twice a year, we put together an event in the community where we um, uh, we we put teams together with random strangers who have never met each other, and those teams. Uh, are told uh, that they have to make something with a specific technology. Uh, for this event, the technology was Django. And uh, then uh, we give them a theme on the day they start and say, this project has to fit this particular theme. And the theme this time was early internet. So we have a lot of fun um, submissions that are building Django projects uh, that are thematic of early internet websites and projects. Um, and, and generally just like, I guess, old internet sensibilities is, is the right way to think of it. So that's what we're here to, to look at today. We're going to go through our favorite projects and show them on the stream here so that you can see what people made. And then at the end of the stream, we are going to figure out which one we like best and uh, determine a winner and two runners up. So before we do that, happen. Um, before we do that, we're going to have a little chat with uh, Kyle here, so you guys can get to know him. Yep. Um, it's, uh, after all, a sort of a, a guest of honor for today. <laughs> so let's see, I'm going to put you up on the screen, yep. like this, in all your glory. Hey, Kyle. Hello. So, Ready um, to start. Yep. can you tell us just like like a very brief like intro to who are you? Okay, so yep, I am a recently promoted uh, core developer for CPython. I was uh, nominated and elected back in April. I primarily contribute to the modules um, Async IO and Concurrent Futures, and uh, as well as just general pull request review and documentation uh, to various areas. Yep. So you're writing the code for Python language itself. Yep, uh, for the reference implementation, uh, C Python. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go back a little bit. Well, how did you actually yep. begin with programming at all? What caught your interest in that? So, I first started programming back when I was in high school. I had joined the uh, the STEM Academy, specifically in robotics, mm -hmm. and the, the first ever experience I had with programming was on these uh, Lego. NXT devices where we would do this sort of visual drag and drop programming where we'd set like a you know the robot to follow a route like around a house like take the trash out get the dog that kind of thing um <laughs> yeah it was uh not exactly your conventional program but it was a great educational intro into things um and then in college um at first actually I had thought it was as fun as I do now because I you know got stuck with the textbook copy and paste the sort of classes but as i got more into my classes and started doing uh programming challenges on sites such as code wars and Pleat code the problem solving aspect of it really expanded for me and you know i began to really see the appeal um at some point i had started contributing to the uh arch linux uh, wiki um basically like as they use that as their main source of documentation and uh eventually did an internship on a government uh, software development team for nine months and at some point towards the end of that internship um i had an interest in you know contributing more meaningfully to open source uh, mm -hmm. and i started off with my um first pull request to C python um like basically is a improvement to the frequently asked questions it was just like a minor wording improvement you know your typical right. like intro but that was like your first real yeah. open source pull request or what 
Yep, that was yeah the first open source pull request actually. I tried a little bit before that um, with uh, there was oh there was some uh, testing framework from IBM. I forgot the exact name of it that I had tried to get into right. unsuccessfully. But uh, yeah, that was my first ever pull request. <laughs> I honestly like, did not like think you, it would get merged. <laughs> you start start off by going straight for like contributing to C Python, it seems like... Um, yeah, it's a little 0 to 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I think no, a lot of people would start yeah. like a small little project or whatever. Yeah. This is a massive project with uh, dozens of yeah. contributors. And I definitely recommend that approach for most people. Like as far as like, you know, just getting into things, it is a lot easier to start off with like, you know, your medium sized projects, like notably uh, for Python Discord. <laughs> you uh, know, right. Check out yeah, so repositories. Not yeah. throwing yourself off the deep end. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, just even like for decent sized frameworks, even like, you know, with that have uh, you know, pretty large followings in general. Like uh, the advice that I'd give to anyone is to, with these larger projects, you know, you have these huge monolithic code bases that take a lot of time to learn the internals of, mm -hmm. and are yeah. oftentimes a lot slower to move as far as changes go. So, definitely better to start smaller if you can. <laughs> but in terms of languages, um, you were talking about this uh, visual block programming language, of course, uh, but then. Yeah, this, little um, skipped over a little bit. <laughs> right, but the, the the internship you mentioned was was that Python as well. Like, how did you come across Python specifically? The, so my Python experience specifically, I had experimented with it uh, back in high school um, because I had more of a strong interest in security. Um, and specifically, I had realized at some point that if you wanted to get more seriously into it it was necessary to you know learn actual scripting languages otherwise you were just copying and pasting scripts from others effectively <laughs> um, right. and i started off with doing a you know i did the learn python the hard way with python 2 which didn't catch my interest as much at first but i think when i did picked up uh, automate the boring stuff with python and started seeing the interesting practical applications and interesting ways I could sort of automate my day-to-day -day life. Um, I started getting more seriously into it. That was probably around uh, six to seven years or so ago, probably six years. So, um, okay, you tried yeah. uh, uh, Learn Python the Hard Way, that's the Seth Shaw book? Um, yes. And then you found yeah. Al Spygaard's uh, Automate the Hard Way. No, Automate, yeah, automate the Hard the Way. Stuff. Automate the stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Spygaard is awesome. Uh, I really like his books as well. My first book was also a Swigert book called... Um, oh, wow. Sorry, it's Swigert, not Swigart. Yeah, Swigert. Swigert. Um, his uh, book is called Invent with Python. It's like a little sort of... Um, oh, yeah, I've seen that. ...written with, I guess, younger audiences in mind and uh, focuses on teaching these simple games, you know, like Tic-Tac-Toe and Hangman and so on. In yeah. Python, and then teaching the syntax while, while doing that. I found it really good. So that was my first Python book. Oh, very nice. Uh, yeah, I, I've definitely seen that book around before. Yeah, yeah, they're both excellent. If if you guys uh, watching this, uh, if you're still looking for that first Python book, uh, do check out anything written by Al Swigert. Yeah, he's amazing for when you, especially when you don't know what you want to do with Python specifically, and mm -hmm. is giving you general interesting ideas for. Yeah, yeah, you know, very like um, active learning focused because it's all yes. about like. If you get stuck in this like passive learning loop, that all you're doing is just reading tutorials and learning more things, but you never know when to actually get started making something. But uh, Swigert's yep. books have a tendency to just get you to make something right away. Yeah, the definitely. Start making, the better, I think. Uh, cool, excellent. So, um, how about Python Discord? How'd you come across us? Oh man, that's a hard one, actually. Uh, I would say probably I. Uh, was looking just in general for Python communities uh, back around. And this was actually probably a year before I started opened that first pull request. Um, I was probably intermittently active, like, you know, occasionally coming on the general channel and just having general discussions with people. I think I had, don't know if I used the help channel system. I think I might have once or twice, but um, I generally I just before we made it, to be honest. Yeah, no, I probably did. Um, it, that it definitely wasn't the modern help system, at least. I guess more so right. if I yeah, did no. not help on something. I think we just had the yeah. enumerated channels back then. Yeah. Um, 
in any ways, though. Uh, yeah, but I just, in general, had found it to be a really welcoming and open place where we just kind of have, like, pop in and have casual discussions with people. Um, and I was, like, kind of just intermittently active with it. Um, hmm. It wasn't probably, though, until uh, I had actually gotten more into C Python and got the community role and stuff, and I started being more active in the help channels, especially uh, in the more recently created... Uh, specialized topical channels like in the async io one i found for me it was you know a good way to simultaneously help users out while also getting a decent idea of the common problems that end users frequently run into yeah um you know and just figuring out what are some pain points in the documentation and things that we can work on to help make things more usable yeah that's nice uh getting there to the ground getting in touch with the user base that kind of thing yeah it's exactly. really important I mean, uh, it's easy to come, come sort of um, removed from from that community when you work on such a big project. Yes. The bigger yeah. the organization becomes, the harder it is to get in touch with the actual users. Right? Yeah, no, and especially it, as that sort of volume of users just continuously pours in and grows in as much, yeah. like there's you know hundreds or thousands of users per developer it can be a little difficult to keep up with things but you know we try <laughs> yeah i was talking to some of yeah. the microsoft people um working on vs code and they said the same thing that like it's, they want to get back in touch with their users they've been setting up a discord server we've partnered with it you can find it in our partners yeah. channel and it's all about like microsoft. getting to talk to the end users and like yeah uh, understanding their perspectives and like what's actually on fire yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. And although it can sometimes be difficult to differentiate, you know, the, the exact audience because, you know, you have just such a huge mix of yeah. students versus people in the real world trying to troubleshoot and use it with their, for their actual applications. So it can hmm. sometimes be difficult to filter out the information and, you know, who yeah, you're actually yeah. helping. But, yeah. So um, now you're a student, right? You're in yes. university? Yes. Uh, Yes, yeah, so I'm in the uh, last year of my bachelor's degree at uh, Seminole State College. It's a local um, college for a, like sort of two-year and four-year degree programs. Um, I'm in the information systems technology degree program uh, with a programming specialization. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very relevant to what you're doing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although uh, the degree program is... Uh, a little Java focused for my yeah. taste, but we do have some Python courses at the college, and you know, they've got the chance to use it a bit for that. Right. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about yeah. Python Discord and your role as a core developer. Yeah. So, um, how did you actually start contributing to Python? Like, what the, you talked you talked about how you uh, you made a change to a, a text, like a documentation or something. That was your first. That's free. Yeah. Um, and then, so basically from there, after that uh, initial pull request to the documentation, um, I had started just, I think I expanded further working on a few other open issues, like there was documenting some exceptions for the OS module. Um, I got around to doing some, you know, unit test restructuring uh, for some old ones that had been around for import lib and just gradually started getting into fixing uh, trivial bugs through the bug tracker on bugs.python.org until I got familiar with the workflow and um, eventually that transitioned into just doing like some general PR review. Uh, one thing that actually, you know, we sorely could use more of from a uh, new contributor. So anyone who's interested, uh, definitely the PR review is an amazing route to go because uh, we're always bottlenecked on the lack of code reviewers. Um, yeah. and that eventually transitioned um, into helping to create the uh, Python triage team um, which was basically a group that was used as a, a stepping stone for people who, you know, are active contributors interested in helping out with that code review process um, and transitioning into core developers eventually. All right, cool. And, uh, yeah. And so basically that uh, I helped, worked alongside uh, core developer uh, Mariata Wijaya uh, and then, um, you know, working on that um oh sorry just brain fart for a moment just need to collect my thoughts lost my train of thought for a moment <laughs> but um yeah no so we created the triage team um and then i which i ended up joining um and then 
that eventually transitioned into working in more complex issues, such as in um, Async IO um, and Concurrent Futures. And after working on a couple of projects um, in Async IO, I had um, specifically reached out to Yuri uh, uh, Selevanov um, to start a core developer mentorship. Hmm. Um, so over the so you course of to them. Yeah, I actually reached out to him basically well, after working on a few projects. Being an at all, like, is this um, something they announced? So I'm what? trying to remember specifically. I think I had read about it on the uh, at first on the dev guide, okay. um, like basically figuring out how the whole core developer thing worked, oh, but yeah. um, also through some of the uh, Victor Sinner has published a significant amount of. Uh, you know, through his blog and through other yeah, yeah, yeah. documentation that he's posted around about sort of the the process, the path to becoming a core developer, and that's right. So, so you joined this mentorship me. thing. Can you can you yeah. sort of enumerate specifically what that entails to being in a um, mentorship? Yeah, so it's probably more hands off than most people would think. It's uh, probably around, uh, I would say, per month. We probably dedicated it around somewhere around like anywhere from like 10 to 20 hours working together some were a bit more involved where we would actually you know work hands-on on projects and in the internals of async io and others were just kind of more like you know back and forth email exchange of questions like you know general questions about the workflow like you know right. you get stuck on an but, issue you know so, uh, but some of it was like it took the shape of like pair programming sessions um, I would. We didn't actually have uh, many live pair programming sessions. A lot of it was a lot more. You know, the communication was a lot more asynchronous. I would say, okay. um, just uh, because uh, of, uh, ironically, <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that <laughs> that's I said it not on purpose. <laughs> that's oh man! But um, yeah, no. I have a theory. Um, you know, being the the co-founder of EdgeDB, in addition to his, you know, Python work, it, that was very much something he, the mentorship was yet another thing on the side, so um, okay. it was it definitely, you know, limited time kind of thing, but... Right. Um, All right, yeah. so um, if someone else wants to get into contributing to Python, what's the path that you would recommend they take? So, basically, the rough path I would recommend is first off starting off with uh, the dev guide which can be found at devguide.python.org um, but overall for actually contributing I would recommend first going on to uh, bugs.python.org and we have a few um, keywords on there if you go into the, uh, the search area there's uh, both newcomer friendly um, which is you know intended for people who are you know working on a very first issue and just mm -hmm. want to get their feet wet with opening a PR um, or also there's an easy tag too which is a little bit more little slightly more involved than just the newcomer friendly issues but yeah. intentionally left alone for you know less experienced contributors right, to right, work right. on things cool. and yeah and in I general there are a lot of bugs okay. in, in that fit these filters like normally there is a lot that fit the easy filter, especially uh, newcomer friendly comes up a little bit less often, like depending on when you search for it. Um, it may not it may or may not be there, but you can guarantee there's usually a, a you know, 50 plus easy open issues at any time. Right. So like that's the solving bugs route and, and making. Pull yes. Requests. But then and you also mentioned this triage team. How do you join that if you're interested in just doing, you know, code review and help so, out like that? You can actually become a part of the triage team uh, simply just by, uh, you know, actively helping out with some code reviews. I would say though that it is probably a bit easier to get into doing code reviews at first after you've opened a couple, at least a couple of your own PRs, mm -hmm. um, regardless of the complexity, just so you have, you know, some familiarity with how the process works. Because a lot of yeah. triaging is too is you know guiding and new contributors like to you know working with version control properly, you know, fiddling with the continuous integration. And, right, right. So, um, so having gone through so, that process yourself is yeah. an important part of training how to... Yeah, definitely. Right. No, I understand. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, there's a lot of different routes you can go with it, um, but I have found for myself, at least, that uh, the best route to go was working on those easier issues and while basically waiting on a response from a, a core developer, um, to actually go in and review and merge your pull request, um, I would actually go through and do, um, 
you know code review in the meantime basically because right. there is a oftentimes a delay with it being mostly volunteer driven yeah, okay. so that but, yeah. i mean the yeah. same thing is true in python discord repos as well and yeah and honestly in most organizations have problems with getting their pull requests reviewed in time it's it's an epidemic. yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, especially though when there's so many more people wanting to open a pull request review compared to the amount of people able yeah. to review them. <laughs> All right, so um, since you have some special insight to this, what are some of the, the really interesting big things planned for Python in the future? So I would say probably the biggest thing upcoming in the near future that's a general language feature coming uh, is we have the uh, structural pattern matching coming up, which is a long-awaited, uh, basically a switch equivalent of a switch for Python, um, but you know a little bit more involved in that. It's especially useful for you know replacing like wall massive walls of if else ifs, yeah. um, particularly in the case of uh, matching against. Uh, specific classes it's like you know you're doing like a huge wall of is instance checks um it, it does have a way of looking uh significantly cleaner and i would recommend for anyone interested in the idea of pattern matching to check out the uh the open pep for it which was i think recently moved to pep uh 635 cool um and then there's also some other interesting things in the works like of course the uh the sub interpreters and which involves a lot of work in the within the the c api of python mm -hmm. um of basically changing from a global state to a per interpreter state um you know both just moving uh you know the init the module initialization processes um and isolating you know more implementation details to make it possible instead of having a single gil per process that's running python to have a single gil per uh, interpreter and that's when yeah, yeah. things get interesting from a performance perspective <laughs> yeah yeah i've been looking at that too sub interpreter yeah. things interesting yeah stuff. we're also too in the process maybe a little less exciting but uh for us especially is removing some uh of the older modules that are around in the standard library which mm -hmm. um you know for, I guess for the average person getting excited about removing things isn't this <laughs> fun, but um, what is nice about it, uh, though, is that basically the less total modules that we have to maintain, especially those lacking active experts at the moment and that have largely been yeah. phased out in favor of newer alternatives, like such as, you know, the old async core that was around before async IO or like yeah, the yeah, yeah, or exactly. dist utils, you know. Yeah. Um, it, basically, the less of those modules there are around, the more it allows us core developers to focus our, you know, already limited time within the modules that are more impactful and wide, more widely used by the community. And of course, those those will be deprecated and, you know, after two major versions removed from that point, and they're always will be around, you know, as art as the archived of the old version. But basically, what it means is that we won't have to, you know try to go back into these older you know largely yeah. um less relevant uh library uh parts of the standard library yeah, and that focus our effort on more relevant uh, it's things. always good to get rid of sort of like yeah. technical debt and do some cleanups on them or else you end up with an yeah. unmanageable monolithic mess yeah no it so it definitely helps to move some of that stuff and for anyone interested too um i can paste a link in the chat for all of the currently open peps um under consideration yeah. and that misses out on some things but it does have like smaller and medium scale things but it gives you an idea of a lot of the larger things that are currently being worked on cool if you're curious right so uh, i want to talk about one last thing before we move on to the actual reviews here um we have an upcoming event on python discord that you're a little bit involved in the um yep Core Dev Sprint, which is normally held at PyCon, uh, yep. can't obviously can't be held at PyCon this year because PyCon's been yep. canceled by yep. COVID-19, sadly. So uh, for the first time ever, as far as I'm aware, the uh, Core Dev Sprint is then being done remotely, digitally. Yep. And um, after uh, discussing it uh, in your team, it, it seems you've arrived at the the conclusion that then maybe you should do that python discord yep it's, it's nice. it works out perfectly for us from like uh you know from the infrastructure perspective you know having mm -hmm. a partnered server for the increased bandwidth allowance but yeah it's 
it's interesting this year because you know normally so to give a brief overview of the what the event normally is it's effectively a, a week of time uh, that you know several of the core development team members set aside uh, to work in uh, synchronously on issues um, in comparison to you know having to wait on delays because um, the, the core development within Python is done largely you know just on the voluntary basis like with people setting aside yeah. you know five to ten hours a week sometimes getting paid a few by their employer but usually that you know significantly can inhibit time spent on the project since you know you have to wait significantly on people to get back to you but during the week of the core dev sprint that we host every year um it's kind of like a gathering of the core development team where we you know kind of all group up together and work on projects either within the standard library or within the c api or right. and just general I, as I understand cetera, it, yeah. the psf covers um the travel to get you yes. all to the same place you'd normally so that you would and not uh, have be hindered by like living far away or yeah so it's a unique opportunity not only yeah. to get lots of work done but also to like socialize and meet these people face to face yeah, right person yeah like yeah that's a huge part of it really is just you know being able to see them in person you know mm -hmm. then put a face to the name that you've been interacting with for yeah, so long and really just nice. also too it's, it's some big names behind it too like with uh in previous years like companies like google hosting it um is you know they to get a chance to talk yeah. with some of the core developers about things that they're interested in and you know to get their name out there for promoting open source yeah yeah, yeah exactly cool yeah. um so um what does the core dev sprint mean for our normal python discord members uh, what will be there so uh, what's going to be particularly big for the community at large is for we're the first time we're doing a uh, community q a session uh, which we had the questions open uh, for a brief window um it was only from september 24th to 30th that the questions were open but there will be um the q a taking place uh where you know people can these questions are basically just from general python users and members of the core development team will be um, addressing individual questions based on their background experience or if it applies to a specific module right. um, and that'll be taking place uh, here on Python Discord at uh, I wait, oh, 20, I gotta pull up the schedule real quick at the, the, the exact time yeah, it's the 20th uh, to the 23rd uh, well, yeah well the uh, that's the that's 19th through the 23rd right. is the sprint week right. the, it's mm -hmm. on the 20th where the Q&A is taking place okay, it's cool. uh, at uh, 3 p.m. central time yeah. so we'll yep. be helping out to put that together and we'll be streaming into YouTube of course and yep. then um, we'll edit together a slightly nicer looking version that we can post uh, to, to the YouTube as well and also to the PSF's YouTube channel I understand yeah. So that you guys can see it if you missed the, the stream, um, that'll be really interesting. Just uh, yeah, know, the people who are the most involved with the Python language answering questions from the community. That's always a really welcome thing to see. I love that. Kind of yeah. Thing. No, I think it'll definitely be exciting, and uh, I'm looking forward and to it hopefully myself. you know to continue doing this in future years as well, based on how this one goes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, hey, Hemlock, you there? Hello. Hey, do we have any questions from the chat so far that we should answer here now? Uh, I don't think any that haven't already been answered by the interview, okay. but I will definitely okay. keep my eyes open. Yeah, and right. uh, uh, we've got uh, Hemlock, uh, uh, one of the, our admins, my favorite admin by far, who is uh, here in the chat with us, and he'll be watching you guys. So if you guys have any questions uh, during the stream, just shout out, and Hemlock will interrupt us uh, and... Uh, ask us to answer those questions because we're here to if you guys yeah let me just quickly interject if you guys have any questions make sure to ping daniel brown which is me and it'll make me it'll make it a lot easier for me to find your questions and uh and you know interject on these guys yeah so oh um, i did actually see a relevant question that popped up just as i happened to be switching the tab over it was uh, do i need c knowledge if i want to contribute to python and that's, that's actually something that come up during the community q a um and the answer is absolutely not. Um, I did not have a even the slightest amount of background really in C uh, when I had first started, and largely most of my contributions have been uh, Python code and you know just writing documentation. I don't even I don't think I might have uh, 
a couple of ref leaks that I've fixed here and there, but really you don't have to have a strong background or understanding of C. It, it obviously helps significantly and it expands upon the potential issues you can work on. Um, but especially if you're just interested in contributing, um, you can definitely do so without knowing any C. And you could honestly become a core developer too without uh, even really touching the C API as long as you're... Uh, yeah, you I mean, know, I, my understanding is that a lot of the C APIs kind of it's, it's been worked on for so long that it's very solid yeah. and that you don't make that many changes to it while the Python part of Python, a lot of the Python language is written in Python, like the majority of it. Right? Oh, definitely. And yeah. so that's the part that actually needs uh, ongoing work to a much greater degree, of course, than the C stuff. Yeah, it receives very frequent, you know, like API changes, you know, as far as like, you know, the usability goes and yeah. just constantly expanding upon new features i mean there's there is significant work still that does happen in the c api and i would say quite a bit of changes but they're not like you know these huge a lot of the enhancements like within yeah. the module will definitely yeah, exactly. happen with python level. yeah cool all right okay uh yeah uh, hemlock just keep us surprised if any other questions that pop up during the stream and we will make sure to take the time to answer them we're here to give you guys yep. what you want so just let us know if you have any questions at all. Um, yep. And then uh, Vess, um, maybe. Yeah. You, hello. Hey, dude. <laughs> maybe you can say <laughs> a little bit about this particular event and. Uh, uh, yeah, you. sure. Um, so this uh, summer code jam um, was uh, by far our largest code jam yet. Um, we actually started uh, with over fifty teams uh, with up to five members. So you can do the math. Uh, and all those participants uh, uh, qualified for the code jam by doing a qualifier assignment. Um, and it was really cool. And at the end, we had 45 PRs open uh, from various teams. Uh, so we had a lot of uh, reviewing work to do for us. Uh, so all those teams produced uh, projects in those 10 days they had. Um, and uh, uh, um, then our job started. Uh, we had to do the review process. And that's really a, a bit of a lesson in scalability um, because doing fi uh, 45 uh, PR reviews uh, in, in unknown code base, uh, uh, that, that just takes a lot of time. Um, so each review, as we init initially started, takes about an hour or so uh, because you have to get into the project, you have to read all the code, you have to think about how, how uh, would I do this differently? Are there parts that can be improved, um, then you have to write a, a, a report. Uh, and with 45 PRs, that's just a lot of work. That's 45 hours just doing reviews. Um, and that's that's not even counting breaks or getting into doing a review or setting up your computer, stuff like that. Um, so for us, that's, that's a lesson in scalability. That's something we have to think about for future code jams. And we will probably have to uh, change something there. Um, well, during the code review, um, we made a lot of comments for ourselves. Uh, we like this project. This project's code quality is really, really good. Uh, and we kept a list and then we came to about 25 projects um, that we wanted to set up and do a functional review of. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we did a functional review of all the projects. Um, we installed them and then we selected the nine best projects for this uh, judging live stream. Uh, and there are a few lessons here as well. Uh, it takes up a lot of time to set up projects. Um, some projects are a breeze. You have five minutes and everything's up and working. But for some projects, that's slightly more difficult. And that's, I think, already a really good recommendation to all future participants. Make sure that your application is easy to set up uh, for someone else. So make sure that uh, you, you're using a virtual environment or make it easy to use a virtual environment. Uh, people do not want to install dependencies of 45 different projects into their own local computer. Um, so just basically make sure that if someone gets your application, you can have it up and running in five to 10 minutes. That would be ideal. Uh, so, and after we've done that, we had those nine final projects and we're going to do a showcase of them here. Uh, we're just going to show them here live on stream. We're going to talk about what we're seeing, how the application feels to us, um, how nice it is, uh, uh, how usable it is, stuff like that. 
And at the end of that, we're going to come to a final judgment and pick the winners. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, for this code gem, it's important to know that we use Django as the framework. So you're going to see Django projects. And um, of course, the theme was early internet. So hopefully we're going to see very early internet projects. Um, I think that was it for me. Let's start with the first project. Cool. And that should be the annoyed alligators. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I've got it up here. Let's yeah. see. So are these going to be in order from uh, lowest to highest rank? Or how are we doing this? Oh, Good no. question. We're just going to go in alphabetical order of the uh, teams we picked for this uh, top nine, so to say. And at the end, we will have a private discussion about uh, which of those nine will be the winner. Yep. Yeah. So the format right now is that we're going to go through about half of them, and then we're going to take a very short break, come back, um, uh, answer any questions that have been asked uh, by the community, by uh, you guys who are watching, uh, for, for me or for Kyle or for Vess. Uh, you can ask about C Python core developing stuff. You can ask about uh, contributing to Python Discord or about the code jam itself, whatever you want. So uh, yep. just start piling those questions into the YouTube chat and Hemlock will uh, keep track of that and uh, let us know after the break. So before we do my that, best. We'll, um, we'll be reviewing, I don't know, five of these, then a short break, then we do the questions, then we do the rest of the projects, then we'll take a slightly longer break, maybe half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, uh, figure out who the winner is and come back and announce. Yep. So we're starting, yeah, like you said, the uh, annoyed alligators. Um, they uh, have a, a sort of a social network, but there's a terminal at the bottom here. Mm. Interesting. Can you uh, maybe uh, switch to a view without us? Because Eros is in front of the terminal. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, it uh, looks like I am blocking it. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. Just a sec. Let's see. I am the terminal. <laughs> <laughs> You're a terminator. Oh. <laughs> there. Um... So that goes here. Okay. There. So we've got the app up here. I think you should be able to see it okay now. Feel free to confirm. Um, yeah, yep. so we've got this terminal down Sleep. here. I guess we should try playing with it. Maybe I'll type help. Uh, okay, so it looks like I've got features related to maybe logging in and out, changing passwords, that kind of stuff. It's a pretty fun idea to have um, a, a text input for a, a social... I guess the idea is that if you, had, if you had a social network in really early days, that it would be natural to include some sort of text input. Oh, yeah. I in think you case. can go even further back and that you can just have a terminal-based social network without the graphical website. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think that um, having both makes it easier for us uh, in terms of like showing this off on the stream and understanding what we're doing. And it wouldn't be too much of a Django application if it exclusively had the command line. While you guys are doing that, uh, one of the questions is, for the upcoming Python 3.10, some notable changes in type annotation is being worked on that Guido tweeted about once for more developer feedback. Uh, is that something you can address while we're getting um, other stuff set up? Not particularly, because I'm not really as involved in the type shedding and type annotation part of it. Um, I guess that does, I could answer that in a different way, though, that to clarify that with the core development team, we're oftentimes a pretty disassociated group as far as working on different components at the same time. Uh, so someone like myself that primarily works within async IO and concurrent futures wouldn't necessarily, you know, be fully in the boat with the regards to the uh, changes to other areas like with typing. Um, I do have a general idea of what's going on, but really I don't 
probably know much more than the general public does when it comes to specific projects uh, that are being worked on by other core developers. And, and that especially, one might be, yeah, that one that one might be good for whenever we have the core developer stream. That might be a, a good question. Yeah. So you guys can hold on to that. Yeah. Yep. So lemon. How does it feel to be browsing pages using commands? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I like that you don't have an option. You have to use the interactive terminal in order to do certain things. Uh, mm -hmm. So changing views. Um, well, OK, view post help. I guess I need to input a particular post number. This is post number 25. So if I do view post one, I'll, OK, that, that one actually didn't exist. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you post. I guess maybe there's a way to list all the posts. Could there be? Um, no, I guess maybe I need to go home and to see the posts. But here I can see oh. post number 13. So if I do view post 13, then I get like that one isolated. And, okay, um, interesting. I guess um, sign up takes me to the uh, the new account, but now I'm logged in. Message was that incorrect? Okay, message. Send a personal message to any user. Yes. Yeah, so um, it's a bit difficult to do that live here, but we yeah. tested that out during our functional review earlier, and you can actually send messages to another user, and you have a message box to to view your messages and you can uh, you also have a profile that you can uh, uh, where, where you can set your own personal profile um, so that's pretty cool yeah oh, that is interesting yeah very cool what do you think uh, i wish i could use ls <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so natural to type ls into terminals man it's the first thing i did yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to, um, so we can attach pictures, uh, we can navigate, we can look at specific posts, uh, all that's pretty cool. Uh, anything you want me to test here, uh, Kyle? Um, nothing specifically that I can think of that has been shown. Let's see. I guess, yeah, are we able to expand upon any of the individual commands for like a more specific what, what help channel? Yeah, I mean, not as help channel, but uh, more detailed help message, like on a specific command. Um, what, what 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 happens if you do help news, for instance? Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or news minus minus help or something along those lines. Just so curious if that's supported. Yeah, that works. So you can do the command okay. dash dash help. Oh, okay. Ah, cool. And uh, uh, did you show ca case the news command yet? I it crashed. Oh, oh, it crashed. Oh, it's because okay. I didn't provide an input, so I probably oh, need to okay. have an input. So, news, um, lemon. Wow. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, so you have news and if you have a search a query and then you oh, get yeah, news yeah. articles. Okay. okay. It does. It, okay, so I guess it just uses what kind of pattern matching it uses. I'm curious. And then I did not actually see the code for this one. Okay. It gives me some sort of recipe. So if I click on full article, yeah. it actually takes me to an article related to lemons. With this oh, that's interesting. I love this picture. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's fun. Yeah, so okay. yeah. Nice. We seem to be having some weird artifacting on this stream. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's. Bad. Artifacting of what? Like uh, random, random strips of. Uh, like, I don't know, just weird artifacts jumping Seems across the screen. Seems to happen as you're scrolling or changing the screen particularly. Uh, okay. Even when it's set up. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, it's uh, there too, I guess. Yeah, I can see that as well, but it could be a difficult one to fix because I don't know what's causing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll see if it happens on the next project. Yeah. Probably well. I think I'm it, not seeing anything locally. It's, it's not related to the project, I think, because it's uh, over the browser interface as well. Yeah. So, oh, I see now. Oh, I see it too. Uh, I wonder what that is. Might OBS issue. Uh, might be an OBS issue, sure. Yeah, because it looks like yeah. it's possibly a layer. Um, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Well, maybe really uh, if there's hiding the cameras, actually, because when I unhide, them, oh, I don't uh, see it anymore. I think Vester's saying it's the it's the code jam banner. It's hopping around. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think maybe it's better now with the cameras in place. So I think yeah, it's gone. It yep, one... it's completely gone. All right. Cool. Oh, so, uh, okay. No, wait. There it is again. I see it. That is strange. Oh. It's much more stable here now. I think we should just continue. Seems and, like it's uh, only inside yeah. of the browser. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Moving on. Um, we can. Um, uh, uh, do, do, do we have any like? Um, what do you think? Like Vess, what do you think of this project overall? I actually quite like it. I, I like yeah. the idea of including a terminal. Um, it works. Uh, it works well. Uh, there's a small thing with the um, uh, uh, with maybe uh, uh, handling the case that you forget a parameter or an argument uh, uh, better. Um, and, and like display use, the help message instead of yeah, friction. something like that. Yeah. Because in, in usability terms, I think you just get stuck a little bit there if you forget an argument hmm. to a command call. That's what I remember from my functional review. Um, but overall, I, I quite like it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that impressed by the message passing functionality. That's always cool to see in the CodeJam projects when you know people go a little bit beyond just the local implementation and consider other users. Yeah. Yes, and it really looks Web 1.0 as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> very much fits the theme. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Lemon? You've played around with it. Yeah, I really like it. I think it's a novel idea to um, combine to idea to, to combine like modern and um, and old school stuff uh, and the terminal obviously sort of a symbol the quintessential old school technology right uh, yeah. symbol mm -hmm. of the 80s and the 90s and then to take something you know that we didn't really see emerge until the late 2000s and then um, uh, yeah uh, pull it back in time like that uh, it's it's fun it's an experiment that you would never like really think you would ever get to play with and now i get to play with it because someone had that yeah. <laughs> brilliant idea to make it so thanks for that yeah that's really cool and honestly um it's not completely inconvenient either um, no it's actually quite intuitive you know this idea of it. having keyboard input uh, for a site like that it can actually have some advantages uh, it's very yeah. effective uh, and an efficient way to work. Um, okay, so um, I'm moving on to the next one, I think. We have uh, the Bouncy Bullfrogs. Isn't that what they're called? Bouncy Bullfrogs. By the way, is there, just real quick, is there a way for me to view a non-delayed version of the stream? Um, or is it just a... Uh, no, it's just the nature oh, of the okay. stream right now. Since oh, okay, we're, gotcha. we're bouncing signals off of like three different global locations and oh, who, knows okay. where the, gotcha. who knows where the stream server is. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, normally, oh, no uh, normally I would screen share with you in this call, but that actually would mess up. The, the, oh, okay. Uh, that, that yeah, I, I thought that's how it would work, but then it's like maybe I'm doing Should've something. Should have thought of that earlier. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Right. We'll find a solution for that for the next go jam. There's always something yeah. to improve. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. I was just making sure I wasn't missing a live version. <laughs> no, no, no. So that's ba probably important for the viewers as well. Uh, uh, Kyle and, and me, uh, we're a little bit behind. So we hear Lemon talk and then we see what he does uh, yeah. a few seconds later. Um, yeah. But it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to our bullfrogs. Oh, wow, that definitely fits the old style. <laughs> <laughs> I love those icons. <laughs> yeah, I love the super low resolution. Let me know if you see the artifacting now. I'm trying to have it not happen. Doesn't yeah. appear to be present so far. Yeah. Good. Um, yep. So this, I guess, is some sort of a mail client with some extra bells and whistles. So we can uh, start by making an account, I suppose. Yep. And then... Discord. Oh. Uh, yeah, still looking janky. Is it? Hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing it now. Maybe a different browser? I could try. It's really the browser. 
Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if it was the browser and not OBS, though. Well, I mean, it seemed to be, whenever he moved the the window earlier, it seemed to only be jumping on the browser itself. Yeah, I agree that it happened in the browser itself, so I'm bringing up... uh, Can't hurt to try. Firefox here now. Do it. <laughs> you need an email address to register for an email account? <laughs> oh, come on. How's it looking on okay. Firefox? I have to use temp mail. <laughs> uh, it's still I have out. to yeah, wait a few seconds before we can see what you see. It's like, Yeah, that's true, of course. So, okay. So far, so good. Oh, no, there's the glitch. Yeah. All right, I guess you guys are just going to have to live with it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get why it's happening. Um, could it be we might look into it uh, during the break, but for now, let's just keep on rolling. Yep. Yep. Um, probably look at it afterwards. Well, another thing I could do is I could try to capture the uh, window instead of the monitor. Yeah, that uh, might help. Well, yeah. So let's uh, not do that now. Or should we do it now? Uh, I guess uh, the chat can... Uh, if it's really distracting, then... Uh, it's okay for me, but maybe for the for the stream, uh, for the watchers, uh, viewers at home, it may not be ideal. But it's not really uh, ruining the entire display. So yeah, it's, a lot of, it a lot of people happening. are saying a lot of people are yeah. saying it's fine and that it fits the theme. So oh yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, but we will but yeah, no, it during the break. It seems to be happening intermittently enough that you can still generally see what's going on at least. So yeah, yeah, that's not a huge deal. All right. Um, we've got uh, maybe. There. Okay. Fit the screen. I think we've got it now, maybe. Yep, I haven't uh, seen it yet. <laughs> see, uh, yeah, that's a good sign. That'll solve it, maybe. Okay, so I've got logged in here, and um, this one was a little hard to test as well uh, because sending emails is sort of a thing that we have to. Um, you can send them internally, right? So if you have a second account. Uh, yeah, I guess I have to make a second account then. Oh, okay. So I'll register one for you, Gus. Ah. Are you going to send me a love letter? <laughs> I might. Mm. I'm getting this error, but I can still um, I can still log in and out. So I'll log into mine. Now I think it's related to the password validator. Oh. Um, Anyway, no, Something in the credit. setup of that isn't exactly working. I had the same when uh, testing it live on my computer, but the registration still works. So. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we're sending an email there, and now it's uh, appearing in my sent box here. You can see this little. Mm hmm. It really feels like like one of those ancient uh, webmail, early hotmail email pr applications. Yeah, yeah, it definitely here. fits that thing very well. We can see it in the inbox coming in here. Um, ah, so that's oh, nice. there's there's an archive button uh, here, and um, so that and then it appears in the archive. So that's how the oh, okay. there's a search bar here. What am I searching for? London. Oh, try. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm curious if you could search for like, is it just the title only, or does it also search for the content of the message? Like, if you were to search "dog file," for example. Yeah, I'm trying, and nothing's showing. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. <sighs> so I'll try the surf the web, bullfrog mm -hmm. search. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I see that a few seconds There's ago. Another... <laughs> so here, I guess we're finding um, Greek lemon rice. So I think you're uh, getting back to the search feature. Uh, you were searching the inbox, but you archived the email, right? Uh, oh, that might be the way. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got sort of basically a search engine happening here. It's pretty cool. 
So, yeah, an email client and a search engine. Yeah. That's essentially it. That's a lot it's of certain, for, uh, uh, it's, uh, I think, yeah. It well, certainly looks like uh, uh, how you'd see it uh, uh, two decades ago, or yeah. one and a half decades ago. And um, there's an About Us page where they uh, talk about the team, and they say that they're an American multinational technology company with headquarters in Python Discord. <laughs> um, just kind yeah, of the that's cool. Truth, I guess. The word bouncy bullfrog is an in, in genuine that probably isn't an ingenuine, <laughs> ingenuine created by the it pioneers. Is I'm assuming it should be ingenuity or something along those lines. Maybe it's a real word. I don't know. It is an engine. It is <laughs> no. one of the big, big five technology companies alongside mm -hmm. Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook. <laughs> cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's um, the Bullfrog Company. F A A N G B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Fangb. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys think? I think it's interesting. Maybe a little, um, compared to the previous, I'd say probably a little, um, how do you say it? Like maybe less in terms of the total number of features um as far as like I, I don't know i guess i was expecting more functionality in total yeah uh, I, I don't know i think it's uh it's it's quite impressive i yeah. think it take, takes quite a bit of planning and and coding to to set up yeah. the, the core first um so adding features on top Especially of that is is yeah. yeah typically uh, a little bit easier uh, I do like the, the the theming a lot. It's uh, yeah, I do like that. The the icons are very uh, reminiscent of um, of the early internet for me. Yep. With the uh, the globe yeah, no, I'm icon. Yeah, I'm a huge and, fan of the iconography and everything and the visual design of the site. Yeah, I like and the I like the design as well. Yeah. The, the, and the bullfrog logo is a nice touch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's lovely. although it looks a little modern. Compared to the rest of the site, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, please. your company logo is too cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good for us. It's so. really ahead of its time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, no. But uh, I guess more specifically, what I was, uh, what I was had in mind, I guess, was from the search functionality of the, you know, when you were going through the emails and having some tags and such. I mean, it does certainly fit the. Bill, um, but I guess just like you're expecting more individual functionality on that side of things. Yeah. And you, Lemon, how, how was the user experience? Yeah, it's pretty the good. Usability? Um, I know everything seems to work except that one uh, bug that um, I was getting, but that didn't actually ruin anything. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it works fairly well. It would be even more impressive, of course, if we had like multiple users. If this was on the web and we could send yeah. emails to each other, but um, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> uh, maybe, well, we uh, we did try that when uh, in during our functional review earlier, uh, and it that did work. So oh, okay, yeah. And you just demonstrated it with yeah. two users as well. So right. yeah. yeah, well, that adds some points in my book. Then. <laughs> I think. Um, uh, I, I think it's impressive. I, I actually think there's quite a few features here. It's basically a fully fledged email client, and then they put that serve the web thing in an addition. And, um, and this is a thing that was typical of the 90s, um, which is my early internet because I grew up in the, in the 90s, um, oh, okay. was that uh, think they were really bad at scoping applications <laughs> back then. So, like, <laughs> Everything did everything, right? So like yeah, it was okay. very normal for an email client to have uh, some additional feature that had absolutely nothing to do with email. Searching, yeah. yeah, like searching the web is um, well, all, all of the companies that did search engines generally had an email client. So why not like put lots of inter? Yeah, uh, right. Uh, yeah, it's typically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's 
it's typically how you started your your internet uh, session. You, you opened uh, the website, the start page, oh, or start your, page. your 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 yeah. service provider had an email client, and it also has links for you to, to go to interesting pages, or it has a news listing for you. What we nowadays call a widget. Yeah. So yeah. I guess my age might be showing a little bit there <laughs> since I was born in '97. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're a little bit older than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have um, the project by what were they called? The uh, Cloudy Crocodiles. By the way, Hemlock, uh, are you letting these teams know when they're on the stream? Uh, not any specific questions that I haven't been able to quickly address in chat. That's we did have that question <laughs> earlier from uh, Nicaris about, uh, but not. Uh, I think any recent ones for the code jam that I saw. What? Well, I'll uh, save it for the uh, stream oh, like yeah. after, yeah, after break. your break. Yeah. Um, no, but I was asking him if you're letting the teams know when they're on the stream. Oh, oh I will do that. Yeah, do that. <laughs> it's nice that I give him a little courtesy. That's point. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. I didn't think. Yeah, Bess, take it away. So. So we're, we're looking at uh, Django Cities, I think. Yes. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that was fairly common on the internet in the, in, in the olden days, uh, for those too young to remember, is that you had a website uh, like GeoCities where you could host your own website. So you just got a box and you created a page for yourself. You registered it somewhere. Uh, you, you got to enter uh, HTML into the... Uh, uh, website and you clicked OK and then you had your own HTML based website. And in the very early days you have things like HTML Blink which gave you blinking task, uh, text and, and marquee scrolling text uh, uh, across the screen and that was really an, an early day internet experience. Uh, and so here we're seeing a modern version, Django Cities, uh, that allows you to register a, a page in locations and um, that's that's really what we're going to see. So Lemon is, uh, has just created I'm a user. To, yeah. But actually, it turns out that uh, uh -oh. it's not letting me. Is it complaining? Uh, let's see. It What's did work earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It did. Oh, maybe it's because I already created one earlier. Maybe. Oh, oh maybe. So it's so it's giving you a bad username or password instead of... Uh, uh, yeah, that could be it. Yeah, okay. But I thought... I uh, yeah, it doesn't give you feedback when you've registered or uh, anything. Yeah. All right, okay, I'll just register a second one. So I guess that is one definite thing, though, like as far as input validation goes, it is yeah. very useful to have specific messages as to what's yeah. wrong with the user's input. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, the, the actual yeah. exceptions here are being raised in yeah. the console. Rather yeah. than on the stream, uh, or as I mean, yeah. on the in the browser. Yeah. Yeah. So it would have been a great place to have like a little red message pop up or something and say, "Hey, this user already exists." Yes, or exactly. something along those lines. Yeah. yeah uh, so this is obviously you're very inspired by something called GeoCities. Did you mention that? Yes. And um, yeah, GeoCities uh, was a huge, like, was one of the first uh websites ever to allow you to make your own home page basically like you just sign up for free and you could make a home page and you didn't necessarily have to know what you were doing uh, you could just copy paste uh, little snippets from other people and, and put lots of animated gifs on it <laughs> and you would have something more or less workable so um uh yeah uh lemon you might need to adjust fast's volume a little bit a little bit lower a little lower yeah, he's going mm. in pretty loud compared to you guys. Oh, okay. I can uh, turn my volume down as well. Is this better? Yeah, let me know if I need to. Yeah, that's, that's cleaner. Input. Okay, good. Done. Right, so here um, in GeoCities and also in Django Cities, you were able to, and there were all these cities, and each city, here's one motor city, had lots of sites attached to it. And oh, so, so they'd be like subtopics. Yeah. Yeah, so you could claim like an address within that city. That's the terminology they used. But really, yeah, like a sub page oh, okay. within the topic. And um, so we're going to um, uh, create a site, I guess, because uh, we have a home here. We want to 
uh, where's the hair? A button for a new site. Very modern design here, but then, uh, you know, a remake of a really old school. Yeah, it's interesting how the design of the site itself kind of has the modern theme to like a modern bootstrap theme to it, but the, uh, yeah. the actual functionality is very much of that time. <laughs> I, I guess that that's an uh, that that's a very valid way of interpreting the theme, the theme. Yeah. So you, you take an old concept and you lift it into a more modern, mm -hmm. reactive uh, framework. Yeah, it's like yeah. people either took a, a new concept and uh, and pulled it back in time, or they took an old concept and pulled it forward in time. And I think both are in, uh, equally valid interpretations. Of the yeah, theme. that's probably one of my favorite aspects of the code jams in general is just seeing how people interpret the theme differently <laughs> yeah that's very interesting to us as well um, because we spend a lot of time debating the themes and then we have the the theme poll in the community and then you start thinking about well what are people going to do and then you look at the actual submissions and then you you typically see things you, you did not imagine yourself and that's really cool yeah. Very cool. So, and what I like as well is that uh, if you're typing in HTML here in, in, into the Django Cities uh, page you're creating, it has excellent uh, syntax highlighting and, yep. and stuff like that. Oh, very so nice. Now I'm creating an index file for my uh, address, and then it shows up here page. in my in your sites menu. So mm. I can uh, have a look at the page I made, which uh, it looks like this. Um, and of course, if this was really GeoCities, there'd be a lot more color, a lot of yeah. you know, terrible <laughs> yeah. contrasting colors and um, <laughs> animated. Blinking <things>. text. <laughs> but um, the basic concept is here. You can create these. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> Moon landing, flat earth, conspiracy theories. Yes, yes, so all the above. So, okay, so yeah, that's the basic concept of this. Um, uh, it's running on uh, some fairly modern uh, tech. This is a so called uh, single page application, I believe. Um, so, um, it does seem like uh, most... with the old GeoCities, it seems like it would be a bit of a cross site scripting nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. There are a few step routes in here that I can see. Oh, yeah. Click. Anything else that I need to? No, I think it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, I don't think you. Uh... I am so, curious. Uh, I could try. But probably not. It just probably interprets oh, okay. whatever's there. I would assume. Oh no, I was just curious. That was the thing. Oh, actually, I closed on the container so. But yeah, they're running on, um, this is uh, written on Vue, uh, Vue.js, uh, a really cool uh, single page application uh, framework. And uses um, GraphQL, for instance, to talk to the Django API, which is very, very modern uh, way to do it. And, um, and something called Kzar. So that's some really modern, um, technology stack and uh, the whole thing is running inside of a docker container and it's got uh, uh, docker compose to make it easier to set it up so i was really impressed in this case by the technology stack and the frameworks used to build yeah. this site because this is like industry level uh tech stack essentially it's yeah it is really quite cool. rare actually to see a uh, full usage of docker and actually have like a one line command to run it basically instead of a series of uh, commands required to launch the application yeah exactly yeah. and um, yeah, many of the teams did well in this start. regard in using either pipen or docker compose to uh, set up uh, some sort of easy way for us to launch the project uh, not everyone yeah. but many of them had a really nice and smooth experience in setting it up i would say yeah, yeah no, there's definitely a lot of value that i put into having like a single line to run the projects yeah 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 that's a really nice thing to do to aim for a, a, yeah. you know one it's like um, um what's it called the uh, click click and uh, run click and run yeah yeah i, I think uh, if you compare it to previous jams uh, um we had a lot more teams this time uh who 
uh, made deployment and, and running the application uh, 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 easy. And that's pretty cool. Uh, it, it really makes it easy for us because if you if we have to spend uh, half an hour to an hour trying to figure out how to run a project because it isn't running for us locally, and you have uh, forty five submissions, that's that's obviously just too much time for us to yeah. uh, realistically do. And in general, if you just outside of a code jam, if you're deploying something or or uh, trying to have an application being run by a client of yours, they should be able to run it smoothly without yeah. issues. So I was actually too looking through the codes briefly for this, and I do see that they actually have quite a few unit tests included, which is nice. Um, it's something rather exceptional too that we don't see very frequently um, with, yeah. I'd say, the majority of the code jam submissions. And it does look like too there are some invalid HTML tag tests. Yeah. I'm not sure if that gets... Uh, seen on the UI side of things as far as uh, displaying that to the user. Um, I don't know if we tested that yet. I was just looking at the code for it briefly, but um, it is very nice to see yeah. that. Yeah, that's cool. So we, we are at the next uh, project, I think, uh, which is the, where are we? Efficient I Eagles. Efficient, yeah. Oh, the Efficient Eagles, yeah. And I think if I look at it, it's it's kind of like a Reddit clone. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm seeing too, sort of, uh, or uh, something maybe that predates Reddit probably in terms of, uh, what's that one called? That um, oh, I uh, Dig? Dig, yeah, Dig. Yeah, I think it's more like Dig yeah. that they're going for the aesthetic here, but you can see the posts being released and you can vote on them. Um, Python 1.5. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, that is great. And uh, this crazy font that nobody in their right mind would use today. I'm going to try to log in again. I guess I have to sign up again. Um, lemon. Oh. So were the upload and downloads uh, completely not interactable while you I think it's just because I in. wasn't logged in. Yeah. Okay, well, that's just an interesting way of handling it, though, to just yeah, not have see, it as an interactable I, element. I can actually um, click on them now, but there's no uh, cursor on Hover, which is oh, a nice so you thing to do. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. So, yeah, I think from a UI usability perspective, it is very nice to give your users some feedback when they're hovering over a clickable element. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it's very easy to do, of course. I think it's us. Oh, 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 this is going terribly. Yeah. <laughs> Never live code, like guys. Ooh, no. live coding. <laughs> I think uh, hacker pointer. If we do this, cursor we'll hand. Oh, what is it? Pointer. What? And we get hover. this little uh, this little pointer here when you hover. So it's that easy. It's one line of yeah. CSS. And you get like, yeah. uh, a lot more usability in, in the Yeah, system. and like it for bonus points, you know, add a little on hover, slight color change, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's also nice. nice. I'm not going to live code that because uh, I'll just yeah. it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, can you uh, type comments and stuff like that? Yeah, let's try it. Um, yep. I, uh, Apply. I'm a huge fan of math and. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I just like map a lot. Map is really good. <laughs> so then we get that here, and I can upload my own comment and download this root guy. I'm not sure if that matters though. I mean, this. Oh, oh, okay. I can't really change the order of stuff, can I? Uh. No, I don't think so. There's not like a sword by upvotes or anything. It's just by, is it by date posted exclusively? Yeah, you would think that uh, it would be maybe sorted by upvotes. Oh, wait, it duplicated it. Oh, interesting. Uh, it duplicated it probably the because there was still a post uh, request hanging out. So oh, okay. whenever I press refresh, I'm sending the post request again because that was the yes, last page. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Oh yeah. So do they not have? Uh, are they not redirecting immediately after the post request? No, so? I guess I'm still on that post request essentially right now, and gotcha. that, it just returns probably the page. 
So that's a, yeah. um, a little bit of a, <laughs> a bug, actually, because you shouldn't be doing yeah. that. Yeah, I think that's yeah. actually emphasized in the... Uh, one of the, I don't remember which Django tutorial it is, but emphasized like whenever you're doing any kind of post request to include a redirect at the end of it so that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. And you can create a new topic. So if we make a topic called Lemons, and then inside of that topic, I can create a post. They did do a decent job too with the uh, the slugs and the URL though, as far as being reasonably descriptive of what it's currently doing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's always nice to yeah. see like human language in the URLs. Yeah, um, that also helps from so this, uh, like in a real world perspective of getting more hits on a search. Can you try the, the the search feature that they have? Yes, let's do that. Where oh, yeah, okay, it, yeah. it's over here. So if I search for lemon now. I get my post with the lemons are yellow. Um, my main complaint maybe on this page is that it looks like this is like grayed out. And I guess it is because it's like disabled. Like I'm guessing that this element uh, is disabled. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. Somehow. Yeah, I can see that. It is yeah, actually a little hard to read here. the text too. So, <laughs> and if, of course, if I, if I comment out that, you get the blue, but now I can probably edit it as well. So I guess they did it so that I wouldn't be able to edit it. Um, and um, it would probably be better to take this and display it in some other way than inside of a text area. Yeah. Because the text area is really is designed for input. Um, yeah. Not for displaying information to the, to the screen. So that's yeah. a little bit of live feedback there. So let's try the delete. Everything works really well. And we've got a functional search feature and upvote, downvotes. Sadly, the post is not sorting in real time or anything. But can you click on your name? Does it give you a user profile? Yeah, let's or look anything? at that. Let's see. Hi, I am a Honeyfeed user. Apparently, is my thing. I don't know where Honeyfeed is or where that came from. There's even a page here to update. Uh, you know. To so add, yeah, it looks like it is feature. ordered by the creation date. Okay, I was just looking at that like in reverse order. Yeah. I don't know how often that it actually gets updated though to sort. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. You can have your, uh, your can own personal profile. And yeah. I guess that also shows up probably in uh, the posts. Like maybe here. No, oh, that's just if I click through to. Right, cool. So what if I click on this guy, Root? Does he have a profile? Root user, baby. Yeah, nice. And he's got nice. all sorts of stuff. Cool. Yeah, so that's uh, that's certainly a thing. I like this. I think, uh, again, it's, I do too. it's very fully featured for what it is. Uh, I think aesthetically, it's a little boring. Like, it's all blue, black, and white. Yeah, and that there could have been more of a, a thing here. Like, uh, I think that the this like shadow, this like little shade on the buttons, and then having those be part of like the nav bar, be part of the site, is maybe uh, not that thematic. Uh, not something I would consider yeah. early internet to do. It does yeah. have an interesting look to it, though. I would say, like the the shadow hover. Well, it's really like so the only aesthetic choice that you yeah. can really see is this this font this font dominates yeah. the entire page and this yeah. sort of uh, eight uh, segment or is it nine segment yeah. um, how, how about the, uh, the the usability oh it, it uses it's fine yeah the usability is great everything I click on just works yeah, I would say the only thing as far as like responsiveness goes, though, it would be nice to see like, um, you know, rather than necessarily just sorting, looking through the code real quick, it looks like everything sorted um, when you first fetch the page. But when there's like a change made to the page, like you add a new post or something, it would be nice to have like some, uh, I guess, dynamic sorting that goes on each time it's updated by upload. But I mean, that might right. be so, a like, more involved. Yeah, reactivity yeah. on the side, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. But do they have cool. that option? Like, what's the framework used for this uh, for the front end? Is uh, it just pure Django, or do we have? Did not uh, actually get to that yet. 
Looks like they so, were using some, uh, I do see some JavaScript here. I think it looks like jQuery, but let me verify. So, but uh, one thing you could do, obviously, yeah. if you if you use pure yeah, Django, is, jQuery. is to so still could... have a, a... Because on Reddit, if you, uh, on a modern Reddit, if you upvote, the order doesn't change as well. It only changes if you reload the page. And that's obviously something they could have done in Django as well. Here's a funny um, comment in the source that says that the front end is in complete disarray, and now I have to accept that. On the other hand, judges will never look inside HTML, so I can see <laughs> the comments <laughs> in my secrets. Oh, that's exposed, amazing. Uh, exposed. Exposed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for so, uh, for man, reference to, I guess, any viewers that <laughs> might not have the context, we specifically said in the review process that we're primarily considering the python yeah. so basically yeah, 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 that's true, true about that. yeah so so overall uh, uh, what do we feel about this application i'm impressed by the way that it behaves and i like the features it has quite a lot of features a lot of yeah. pages that you you know everything from search to creating stuff to voting on stuff the profile page is really nice yeah. touch. um I just think aesthetically it's a little boring and that there were some poor choices in terms of like the, the simple stuff, the little bit of polish, like the the yeah. pointer when you hover, the upvote would have been nice and like a little bit more visibility in the post text. These are very key features to this application, you know, like having a good voting and text display yeah. seems like the first thing that you should sort out. But um, yeah, um, but like technically I'm really impressed by it. I just yeah. I'm not that fond of the way that it's presented, I suppose. What I personally like, though, too, is that I guess the issues that are present, there are things that could be fixed by individual, like, small enhancements. Like, in order to basically really make this above and beyond, there's only, like, you know, there's, like, a bunch of little minor stuff that you have to do. But to actually get to that point wouldn't be a whole lot of additional work. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the main thing that I'm missing, and it sucks a little because we're not, obviously, we're not um, judging based on the aesthetics to that degree but like it needs a logo like a big fat garish logo in the top left because right now it's like yeah. what site is this where am i it's so naked yeah. without some sort Maybe of something. visual element yeah you need branding yeah. branding is important so yeah i, I don't know I, I think that's the main thing i'm missing is just the logo in the top left yeah yeah maybe a post thumbnail would be nice as well it, and it wouldn't have to be like a nice logo just some text in big green yeah. letters or whatever would have been fine you could do that without yeah. any sort of uh in fact it might be enhanced by being ugly considering the <laughs> yeah yeah as far as fitting. going for the aesthetics yeah. <laughs> ugly Along on purpose is a valid design choice for this <laughs> <laughs> okay oh. um shall we move on to the next project or sure. do we want to have a break now um we've shown four is that it yes Three. so let's do one one Three? more maybe Oh, uh, no, we did yes. um, annoyed. No, this is four. You're right, you're right, you're right. Four, yeah, yeah so. we're on four. So uh, we can do one more, and then we can break. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that would be uh, hypnotic hedgehogs, I think? Yes. Yeah. The hedgehogs. Just give me one second to set it up. Um, yeah, I realize going forward for future appearances if I do some uh, that I probably should clone the repositories ahead of the stream <laughs> so oh, yeah. I can play around with it locally okay so here um, we have a very interesting thing it's uh, particularly interesting that they weren't the only team that went for this but uh, here we have a, a recreation of um, what looks like Windows 98 Hi, <laughs> Um, it's a little broken, maybe, on Firefox. I don't remember it looking like this on Chrome. Uh, we've got the little um, um, the helper. Um, what's it called? Clippy. Clippy, Clippy of course. You might, as well, you might as well look on Chrome now that we know it's uh, it wasn't a browser issue. Yeah, but then I'd have yeah. to change the source again. We'll do it in the break. Oh, oh okay. sorry. Um, if this works better in, in, in Chrome, can can we not take a break now and do this after the break in Chrome? Uh, yeah, idea. I actually, um, yeah, I suppose we can take a break now if you click. 
So uh, one thing for in the break, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A session afterwards. So if you have questions for us, uh, just post them in the, the YouTube uh, chat and uh, Hemlock will uh, watch out and write down a couple of questions for, yep. for Kyle, uh, for us uh, in general. So uh, and we'll be back in, say, 10 minutes. Yep. And uh, curious, if you're still around, you probably might want to repaste the... Uh to see the question from earlier i think it was something to do with the difficulty but um of contributing see but yeah so if you want to repaste that in there so we can... i still got it written down just, oh you okay. Still got it. okay so cool. uh, we'll works. be back in 10 minutes then yes we'll be back in 10 minutes so uh yeah see you guys then Fuck ton of noise 
as he destroys the underground.
As requested, the ceiling fan has been disabled. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm yeah. just going to set up Chrome. You should be able to hear us again now. Sorry about that. Some technical difficulties with yes, the stream we're live. here. So, hello. Um, we've got uh, this uh, project here by. Um, oh, we're going to answer the question real quick, or? Yeah, let's let's do that first. Um, oh. Right, so we've uh, uh, we've got some questions from the chat. Uh, Hemlock, so, uh, why don't you why don't you ask him? Yeah, so, so uh, on the off chance that it died during and just to refresh memories, Akaris uh, was asking to contribute to C Python in the C part. Do you need a quite strong C knowledge, or is the code uh, simplified to make it easier for different macros and stuff? So I would say compared to some other more uh, like larger code, C code bases, like notably like the contributing to the Linux kernel or for GCC or for similar things, it's significantly more simplified. But there is quite a bit of domain specific knowledge within Python, like such as with uh, within C Python, that is such as like for being aware of reference counting and knowing how to, you know, properly, you know, do null checks. But it's. So I would say it's like kind of medium difficulty, um, although it, the some of the higher level functions and macros do simplify some of it. So yeah, that, that answers your question. Okay, uh, yeah. and we have one other question, uh, which is, Python has taken center stage in the machine learning subspace. This is primarily because of uh, well-written, easy to use, and community maintained libraries. What do you think the ecosystem will look like going forward? Um, it's hard to say because it's uh, the one thing that's really, I would say, taken out of the scope of, um, you know, the C Python development itself. Um, I think we do have some people on the steering council with data science backgrounds. Um, but really, I'd say that's taken off as its own ecosystem, completely independent of C Python. And I think our role as much as we can is to continue to facilitate that growth and there are some interesting upcoming features that might interest that domain uh, notably in the there is an ongoing pep for syntactic macros um, because there's like a specific issue I guess within Python where you know we've grown so big within so many different and diverse domains differing all the way from machine learning engineers all to web developers to um, you know, just someone looking to automate some part of their job. And all of these different people want completely different features and don't want other ones to be added. So I think uh, the macro approach is an interesting way to sort of expand upon those communities and allow them to develop in more independently with one another rather than them necessarily hindering each other with the added complexity of new features. Um, but I would say there's nothing specific we're trying to do to really favor one domain strongly over another other than having you know better representation within the steering council and core development team of people with those sorts of backgrounds um, but i can't speak too far onto the details of machine learning as it's not really my area the more so than just the um, some of the contributions i've made to concurrent futures that happen to help that domain excellent yeah 
Cool. We got uh, anything those else? Those are all the ones I have right now. I'll keep I'll keep bugging these guys to get us some good questions. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's jump back into um, the review then. Uh, we've got uh, the hypnotic hedgehogs, I believe. Yes. Or is it? Yeah, I think it is. Um, mm -hmm. And they've got it a sure Windows is. 95 looking app here. Um, with uh, a notepad open where there are some uh, URLs um, that we can try after we connect. But first we have to go through the connection protocol that this was common back when I was a kid. We oh yeah. Type in a username and a password and a phone number. And then uh, phone um, number. <laughs> yeah, you got to call the modem. Yeah. Right? And so <laughs> you connect um, to the internet. So essentially, it was just a phone call. Yeah. And then this little up. wizard guy pops up. He says, welcome to the world of internet, Lemon. The, the infamous sound. <laughs> the sounds, yeah. They're great. Yeah. Um, so now we can try to go to one of these pages. We've got google.com here. We go to that. And yes, we get... our wizards. Yeah. <laughs> and the wizards talking about Google and uh, giving us some background on Google itself. Can we search for something here? Oh, no, this actually reloaded the page. Fair enough. Guess we have to reconnect. <laughs> so don't you know, that, try to uh, Google search for web browser very much reminds me of like an old text editor UI. <laughs> like it's top there. Here's a typical nineties blog. This one is very true to um to my it's very nostalgic. Um Wow. So <laughs> we've got YouTube. Let's mm. go and check out YouTube. And, um, yeah, uh, YouTube here with only a single video, and that's the first video ever posted to YouTube, me at the zoo. Wow. And it works. Yes. All right, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. Very nostalgic. <laughs> so that's cute. Um, we've got um, Twitter, which, of course, uh, didn't exist at all mm. when this operating system was <laughs> That's okay. YouTube did not exist as well, so. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, um, the but uh, this is probably true to a very old version of Twitter. Perhaps. Oh my goodness! I think it's, uh, it's yeah, the and then we've got uh, blogarea.com, which mm -hmm. I've never heard of. Doesn't work anyway. Four oh four. What are, what are we, what we are doing? What, what are you doing? Hmm? No, I'm just remarking on the uh, the Twitter that we're a little bit behind. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, the um, there's no I can't use any of these, but they do highlight when I click them. I can hmm. full screen. I can't full screen. I can't minimize. It's interesting how the it seems to do a very brief blink when you at the on hover, but then disappears immediately. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess this is the the features they had, and I mean some of these websites are really fun, and uh, yeah. especially I like. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have pressed enter. Silly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I especially like the very cool blog because I feel like it's. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the uh, the clip and the wizard. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Side the, the wizard is probably the, the main yeah. feature here, right? Yeah, it's yeah. um, it's a fairly well. I mean, okay, so now both Clippy and the Wizard were there, but um, the I sound feel like that blog is going to give me lots of malware <laughs> just by looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I love the sound effects and uh, I love the Wizard. Perfect. Um, although I manage, I, I I would imagine that they probably didn't write the helper code from scratch. I imagine yeah. we can plug and play the Clippy uh, stuff from somewhere, maybe? Yeah. Like I know there are a few projects out there that you can uh, uh, use to give yourself a Windows 95, 98, or Windows XP yeah. kind of browser experience. Like a style yeah. sheet, essentially, that you just plug in. Yeah. 
Still, this is very much an early internet. Uh, it's very thematic. It fits the theme perfectly. And uh, it's a little nostalgic. There's some presentation yeah. issues with this. I guess this this box probably should have been inside of uh, uh, the thing. But that's okay. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Curious, so, does so. our... Uh, how does, does our recycling bin actually function at all over there or anything, or is it just mostly for theming? What, does the what? Uh, the recycling bin there on the desktop? No, I can't. Or, uh, oh, okay. I can't. I can click it, but that's it. Oh, okay. Oh, I got you. Just yeah, it. And it, it, it is actually lacking one vital Windows feature of that day. What's that? And that's that's the blue screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, could, have, could have been a nice Easter egg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's mostly the the um, the wizard and the browser are are the two components that sort of do something, and everything else kind of just yeah. isn't done yet. Yeah. I suppose. Um, yeah. Okay. But still, um, and then I suppose the the meat of this uh, project hand in is probably the websites themselves, which I imagine they coded from scratch to make them yeah. like look right instead of uh, trying to somehow present them modern websites uh, through some sort of lens yeah so i actually like like the, the marquee scrolling text they yeah. have on the blog website and stuff like that it's very uh, early internet yeah this very is, much uh, so it looks pretty good nice work yes yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm impressed with the scale of the project um, in general i mean i think yeah there is something to be said about having an ambitious scope uh, within the yep. duration of the code jam, and I think they definitely went for that, even if they couldn't get around to implementing everything. Yes, and it has Nokia phones. So. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna set up the the next project then. Just one second. Um, I think. And that's going to be our Juicy Jaguars. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Juicy Jaguars. Well, <laughs> pretty similar uh, approach here. Oh, yeah. Um, ah. So, yeah, in this... fact, they did exactly the same thing. <laughs> uh, so funny. let's compare those to back-to-back, uh, -back, I guess. They've got a Windows 95. Um, they call it Web 95. You can even see the little font here. Um, here, you can actually use the Start menu. Um, okay. Although there isn't that much we can do. The settings has some themes. Well, Windows 3.1, nice. Um, <laughs> oh. so, yeah, so we can change yeah. the theme. Oh, yeah. very nice. <laughs> and we can even do a Vapor 95, which gives us this, uh, uh, this, um, yeah, I don't think, check back later. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. There's a Rickroll, isn't there? Nice. <laughs> they Rickrolled me. So, uh... Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You got Rickrolled by our I think the, the window dragging does normally work, but uh, it seems a little broken on the... Uh, they're right, saying you have to do it fairly slowly. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that might be the no. thing. I think if you do it slowly, it works well. Yeah. Okay. So here we've got the banner for that I designed for the early internet theme. That's nice to have open. I wish I could close it, but I can at least minimize these windows. So that's nice. Get them out of the way. Um, there's a help thing here that explains uh, what we can do. Movable windows, minimize, maximize. The taskbar works. There are Easter eggs. And the Internet Explorer works as a fully fledged browser, it says. So, oh, okay. with yeah, that in mind, let's navigate to pythondiscord.com and see what we get. Yeah. Wow. What? <laughs> That's amazing. This actually wow. brings up our <laughs> okay. website, but it's, it's somehow like a made to look. version of the site. Yes, but this isn't done by rewriting the site. This is done no. by somehow injecting CSS and HTML to like yeah. change the wow. font. And, and it's still fairly functional, except for the font awesome yeah. stuff. 
Yeah, I think that's amazing. Uh, I'm yeah. honestly really <laughs> blown away by that. <laughs> okay, let's try something else. Python.org, maybe? Uh -huh. um, yeah. Python.org. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I'm going to full screen this window. And that works. Yeah, they're saying so, that it parses uh, the site with Python. It parses Very the site with Python and then injects new CSS into it. Is that right? I have. How did they do this? <laughs> Why is this pixelated? That's amazing. Man, I need to actually look through the code more in detail for this project. <laughs> the I'm logo impressed. here. I guess maybe uh, does some extra magic for this website because they must have made this new design. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. And the readme it recommends going to Google. Um, so how many Easter eggs did we uh, discover yet? I think we found one so far, at least. Yeah, I think we had all three of them during uh, our, our live testing, but I oh, okay. can't quite. I think there was a specific thing you had to type in the address bar or something. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I have. Uh, for, someone yeah, looked yeah. that up for me, and then I will t test that. Um, right now, I'm just so going to check out a few more websites because I think this is about really the image uh, images. They were saying uh, they have some code codes that change the sources of the image and a URL on their site that processes the images. Right. So that's so why they're able to look at okay. that. So certain pages get different logos and uh, and images injected then. And this is like, like done it. on a per page yeah. uh, basis probably. Apple. Yeah. Yeah, this was one of the ones they uh, mentioned, I think, in the readme to try. It's a little naked. Uh, oh, so here's a couple it. of Easter eggs that I was just looking in there. So type uh, 1995 into the address bar there. 1995. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I didn't see it yet. That's see. super fun. Oh, oh wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And then there's also uh, Mother Russia with the space in between. And the M and R capitalized. Oh. Yeah, that one will really do something with the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. It's very loud. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably something you cannot hear in the stream, right? I think that the stream could hear it. Uh, I'm going to reload the page because it's like crazy loud and I don't think I can adjust it very easily. But that's uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so yeah, that's really fun. Um, and th was was there a third Easter egg you said? So we had the Rick roll. We, we all yeah, that was the, right. Okay. The Rick roll there. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So I think that's nice. all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is really impressive. The scope. Yeah. Of this. I am very impressed the by background it. to all sorts of stuff. Wow, look at this. <laughs> that one is awesome. I will say, though, briefly, from you know, not to go too far into the code review part, since this is more for the demo, but um, that while I am very impressed by the functionality, I will say that like uh, the code could use some more cleanup as far as function separation goes, and hmm. you know, basically just trying to cram too much functionality into single functions instead of separating things up more. Yeah easier to read otherwise yeah i really like the wallpaper functionality that you're showcasing uh, that yeah that's showcasing really cool just now. there's all sorts yeah. of nice and th 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 very nice looking wallpapers mm -hmm. as well okay the font uh, size break stuff a little bit <laughs> that's okay yeah. like it used to back in the past as well <laughs> yeah all right now what well, this is really impressive i think okay ignoring yeah. all of the wonderful bells and whistles and how usable it is um the the parsing the website to make it look old That's, is such yeah. a good idea yeah i'm i was honestly blind by that feature of it That's very impressive and it, it it's not perfect or anything but it works fairly well even for okay, yeah. yeah this one is a little i think that well Reddit i mean really also just like given this. the amount of time in the code jam i would not imagine someone would implement that sort of functionality yeah yeah did not expect that at all <laughs> oh, it's a really fun approach oh it tries to full screen yeah. the reddit it really doesn't like yeah 
Reddit was, does not want to be part of this experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Reddit has all kinds of uh, anti scraping. Uh -huh, oh yeah. yeah. So that might be the thing. Uh, YouTube yeah, is like font side kind of breaks everything. Yeah, it looks yeah, like... yeah. It does. Gonna... But actually, uh, I remembered uh, back when you had Windows ninety five or ninety eight, <laughs> some font size uh, features really did break everything. So it's not entirely yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's realistic. Yeah, it's realistic in <laughs> uh, that sense. Right. Yeah, it gets pretty broken when you try to mess with that. It's but, basically um... like old Internet Explorer simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's a great project. I really like it. What do yeah, you guys think? No, I, I do too. Cool. Very impressed. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Um, so where are we then? We are on melodic manatees. Ew. Right. That's that's true. Melodic manatees. That's a name. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> what I would have. Okay, early. Was it just like Joe who came up with like all of them or something? They're auto generated from some code oh. we wrote, I think. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So we had a list of adjectives and a list of mammals or animals in general, and we combined them. Just combined them. Hmm. With a bit of a selection, obviously. Oh, yeah. It's just some of the names they combined together so well, like, especially with. So you put in mixing some alliteration too. Yeah, yeah, we tried to do that on purpose yeah. so that each uh, yeah. each team gets a letter essentially. Um, and we uh, do one yeah. for each uh, letter of the alphabet. Yep. Yeah. Right. So this next project, um, the melodic manatees. Uh, does, what is it we're looking at here? Looking at some sort of um, landing screen with all sorts of features in it. A dashboard. Yeah, it looks like it's supposed to basically be an app for like a home landing page that you start out with. Like, this yeah. is where you would first go when you open your web browser. I think this is when you wake up and then you have your yeah. morning news and you have your to do list or your journal entry, I think it actually is. And you have your weather forecast. Uh, and something else you can do in this website is you can set multi tabs, which means that with one click of a button, you can open uh, a multiple tabs. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess there may be some migrations the, uh... missing here. I wonder. Uh, no, no such table. That's not a good error. Because I'm pretty sure I can't log in here now. Or can I? Check out the README. I will open the README. I forgot the README. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's looking for some tables that don't exist. I'm going to see if I can migrate real quick. Might have to do that. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's it's uh, to kickstart your day, early morning internet. So instead of uh, early internet, this is a different interpretation of the theme. Of the theme, it's for early in the day. So did you have uh, oh, okay. an env file to stick in the root directory? Huh, what? Did you have, did they provide an env file uh, to stick into the root directory? I'm seeing that as part of the readme instructions. Yeah, I just didn't, uh, I guess uh, that the oh. migrations hadn't been run properly. I'm running them now. Oh, okay. So it should be fixed by yeah. that change. No, I guess I got to sign up. Um, hmm. <laughs> That's kind of a funny typo in the readme instead of uh, Python manage py migrate, it's by thing. <laughs> I didn't catch that earlier. I just saw that scrolling through it. You really have a loud keyboard, Lemon. I'm very sorry. <laughs> It is quite loud, isn't it? Okay, here, now I think it should be logged in. So now I can add a journal entry, um, a red tape, I try tape, but especially 
if it is red. There. So, alright, now we have a little journal entry. We can update or delete the journal entry. There's a multi tabs thing going on. Okay. I don't know how to do this like that. Okay. So there's, I don't, I'm not familiar with what this is sort of hmm? supposed to be multi tab launcher. So when you uh, enter the tabs, you basically just, uh, and when you launch them, you basically get three browser tabs for you opened. Oh, okay. So oh, okay, if you I enter get, URLs, yeah. then uh, it's, it's basically for your morning routine. If you always read the same newspaper, visit hmm. the same uh, website, you can enter a multi-tab and with one click of the button, you can open them all. Oh, I understand. Okay. Interesting. Right. So we've got. So some, I think uh, that could definitely, from the user interface side, though, just be proved by having some instructions there, like you know, enter URL for example, instead yeah, of just yeah. leaving it. Probably. Yeah. So uh, one thing they did mention is that you probably need to allow it to uh, uh, open pop-ups. Uh, yeah. Open multiple tabs. Because, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we'll we'll look at that. But I want to look at this sidebar. We've got weather for London broken clouds apparently yes we've got <laughs> um uh, the news which i seem seems to be fetched from some um, i mean it's just ny times uh, open weather uh, and on the side here we've got time we can like disable and enable it i think to... i think that's debug information so uh aha uh -huh. you, you can see live what what happens uh the, the queries that are being executed in sql how much how much time that takes yeah so this is the django debug bar or something uh, i think it's a special uh, uh thing you can install if yeah. you hide it, it it shows the name of the thing okay that's cool okay. yeah django debug deep toolbar i think yeah something oh, okay. like that um that's a thing Definitely. Okay, cool. Interesting. But I suppose... probably not something to have in production. <laughs> but I mean, not that they would necessarily. Um, <laughs> I think we ha do we have, yeah. is there a debug setting in the readme? No. So, but they do mention in the readme that it's important that you uh, enter complete URLs and that you uh, allow pop ups in your browser. Um, oh, okay. Yeah should probably be interesting to to have that kind of information in the interface itself as well yeah. maybe or at the least have some you know input validation so that if someone puts something that isn't a url you get a double error instead of yeah the, yeah so other features that it has is so for instance you can set the, the background that you see here is you can uh, actually uh, pick different backgrounds and they've uh, provided you with a couple of sample backgrounds I did notice that it's a bit picky with the uh, resolution that it wants. So it has to have a resolution that's large enough for the screen. Oh, OK. Right. Um, yeah, so now we have the, uh, well, why can't I like see okay, it? Cool. So that does work as intended then once. Right, so I can so, launch multi-tabs and then, well, I yeah. get this. I wish that I could have just gotten it from the home page. But now I can launch into all of my favorite Python. Yes. Yeah. stuff oh, indeed. so uh, it's your browser at the moment that uh, blocked the full yeah. feature right yeah okay. uh, so now we got it <laughs> but but yeah there should have been just a button here in the home page to launch them yep and there's a profile page where i could presumably update my uh, display picture yes and the uh, backgrounds and, and stuff like that uh, there's actually a small okay. issue with how they store their uh, files Okay. Uh, use the, the name you type in for your background. Uh, uh, if you if you use slashes there, it will create arbitrary uh, subdirectories in the media. Oh, folder. oh, okay, yeah. So <laughs> could you so actually you... crawl up to the root directory? No, 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 no. no. Django oh, protects okay. that. Yeah, uh, okay. Django will give you an error saying that uh, you cannot go beyond the uh, uh, media directory, directory, the media root. Oh, okay. But uh, I did not like when I changed my town. That's probably not a to... nice way to do that. Yeah. Oslo was not valid as a, as a, as a place to live. Yeah. You should not give your user the, the control over that file name. Yeah. But this was that's... just something I noticed during testing. Oh, okay. so. 
But yeah, no, that's definitely a thing to dote on. It's the general input sanitization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, this. Uh... Um, so the background feature, yeah, you can click on it. That's the one I was uh, change background. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So how does it feel as a user experience for you? It feels okay, although I suppose uh, the multi-tabs thing, when I launch it, it goes into a sub-page and then I have to launch them from there instead of being able to launch them from the main site. And it's so, a little tame looking. Um, yeah. But um, it, it, it behaves okay. It does uh, what it's supposed to do. I'm not sure I understand how this is thematic of early internet. Because it's for your early browsing in the day. So early mm. in the day, internet. So it oh, emulates one of... Oh, right. That seriously? Uh, is that that's, what they said? That's a creative idea. <laughs> early in the day, internet? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that's an, uh, uh, certainly a creative interpretation of the theme. Yeah, that's a very creative interpretation. <laughs> I don't actually mind creative interpretations. That no, means that you, you get very different entries. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, usually fine. I agree. All right. Uh, what do you guys think? Before we move on. Um, impressed? I, well, I mean, I guess I like the look of it generally is decently presentable. Um, I mean, I would say from like a UI usability perspective, it could definitely use some work with regards to you know returning more useful feedback to users and providing more instructions you know particularly for the multi-tab features we were saying but um no i think it's decent overall though hmm. it yeah. looks a bit like what you'd get on a uh, say you have a tablet uh, mounted to your wall for your early internet uh mm. a mirror browsing so to say mm. an internet of uh things tool looks a bit like a display for that yeah, I could see that. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have the mysterious mice uh, who have made a uh, space book. Mm -hmm. The internet space has book. finally made it to Mars, and to celebrate, a social <laughs> media site has been created for NASA's rovers. Take a look around and see the photos from the rovers. So I guess it's like a social network for rovers. And you can see they've got the animated background here. Um, and um, Spacebook, the, the first social media site on Mars. And um, interesting curiosity and opportunity have like uh, <laughs> uh, different uh, profiles. And you can like yeah. go and see the pictures of them if you open up the. It has even specs so, uh, on like the cost $400 million. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it feels there, there's really a guest yeah. book and I think there's a game as well crash that crash landing and then there's yeah let's try the crash landing game then hmm it's, uh, you play as a rover that has just had a crash landing on Mars the rover lost its two power sources in the crash um, oh, well, is this like a text adventure like yes it sort? is so you can move in directions look and, and uh, stuff like that right so if I look now the background's a little laggy for me, like locally. So yeah, if you guys think it lags on your side, it's probably just just how it performs in this browser on my computer for some reason. Might be because I'm streaming I, as well. I remember it being fairly smooth for me locally. Okay. Okay. That might be. I uh, do very much like the animated background, though. It does yeah, have a nice theme. This is what you used to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I keep moving um, north, and I just get the same look. Position. So um, oh, when I was playing go. that, uh, uh, I, I encountered rocks and, and I think a crater, and you can look into the in the crater and stuff. Uh, One immediate uh, f uh, request that I would make is that it should show the look, the output of look, whenever I navigate to a new area. Instead of just saying your new location is 06, it should have said, you know, yeah. how does this place look? Yeah. Um, yes, something like that. But there are actually, uh, so when I was playing with it, you have situations in which you, it says, well, you cannot move here. There's a rock in the way and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I see. So, because now I have moved to 
a ton of places and it al always gives the same response yeah, I when I look. Yeah, it's unlike a combination. <laughs> yeah. So I probably missed the area where there's interesting stuff. Yeah. So Yeah, uh, it is generally too in these kinds of games to sort of direct the user towards places that would be interesting. Sort yeah. of, it's, it's leaving entirely open-ended. So, um... There are a few other interesting things on this Facebook. If you go to the the, to the weather page, it uh, actually uses the uh, the NASA uh, API to fetch the current weather on, on on Mars. That's cool. And I think the weather on Mars, the temperature influences the crash landing game you were just playing. Oh, so, interesting. Uh, huh. Interesting. That's very clever. Um, and I think there's a remark about that somewhere on the crash landing page. Uh, Correct. Play this game when it's hot or something or, or cold. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, and all the pictures being posted here are also um, obviously public domain and lots of stuff, I guess. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you can sign up yet, but. No, uh, but that's okay. I, I was already able to write in the guest book anyway. We yeah. don't have profiles from users from Earth set up yet, but keep checking in with us. <laughs> cool. Exit site, and then we're back here. <laughs> Exit nice. <site. laughs> Under construction. <laughs> what so, do you how does think? it? Uh, what's the usability? Well, how it lags for me, but that's probably on my end, and maybe it wouldn't yeah. lag if I wasn't streaming. Um, but mm -hmm. I like the scrolling background space look. I think aesthetically, it's. Uh, it's somewhat it's pretty interesting to look at mm, and you know, it, it gives me kind of some uh, myspace vibes <laughs> it definitely facebook actually <laughs> yeah yeah very early so yeah. uh, it's the same with the landing page that you have to click to enter a website that used to be a thing more as well yeah 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 that's true <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then um it has a nice logo uh i like it mm -hmm. overall i think this looks great it looks exactly yeah. like early internet should, and uh, and it's a fun idea. And the pun with Facebook versus Facebook is funny. And uh, yeah. there's a lot of features. And here I do in like the, the inclusion of the crash landing game too, in general. Yeah. Like regardless of how it works out, like ever, I, I like the idea behind having like, some games on the social media site. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I, I wasn't really able to play the game very much, but that's okay. Yeah, if this project had a little yeah. bit more time, I'm sure the game would be awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, overall, I think uh, this is pretty impressive, actually. Yep. No. I quite like it. Very good. So what's job. Uh, what's next? I'm gonna check. Let's see. And now the talented tigers. Talented tigers. <laughs> oh wow, we're already at the end of our list. <laughs> Are we? Is that the last one? Yeah, I think yep. that's the last one. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> so uh, let's get that up and running. Let's see. So the, the, the chat remarked for the previous project that there were text descriptions in some of the photos as well. Ah, yeah. yep. Cool. I'm just setting up the next one. Of course, the uh, image hover preview is nice too to have. It's not always a thing. I'm not sure how much. No, that's was usually a plugin. Implementing it, but it was it looked very nice. Yeah, I remember having to 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 install it as a, as an extension uh, to get it working oh, on yeah. like Reddit and stuff. So we have a uh, spider web. Um, web crawler by the talented tigers and uh, spider web uh, well i guess is a collection of some sites here it's um we've got this blog about tigers this also looks a little like geo cities inspired i suppose um and he really likes tigers apparently is it huh. possible to like tigers too much uh, <laughs> <laughs> i can't get over how much i love tigers yeah. Well, tigers are nice. Uh, apparently, tigers are the best thing ever. Are those actual uh, clickable links on the page, or is it just for the I'll try. nostalgia? Of the 
Oh wow, uh, uh, that's interesting. Do the change. Yeah, wow. There are lots of clickable links. Yes, huh. guy company. It feels like you can almost click any link, and it almost just generates. Interesting. All about think. There's so like almost like random links. I wonder if it this reminds is... me of those uh, like when yeah, this... people would get those those old sites that would just uh, link to as many possible advertisements as they could and just embed links in every bit of text on the forum. Yeah, yeah. This is almost <laughs> definitely procedurally generated, I guess. Yeah. So uh, uh, it randomly makes hyperlinks out of the text, and then when you click it, you get a page based on some template that generates some content. It looks like. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah. I'm curious as to where it to look good here to see where it's actually generating the image from. This is pretty cool. So uh, uh, that uh, can you go back Where's to the, the generate image? To spider web. Okay, yeah. So it's using a, a specific site, Pixabay, um, and using their API basically to get the first uh, image related image result mm -hmm. um, based on what the link is. Yeah. So and and then yeah. I'll, when I keep clicking, I can click through then to to new blogs and whatever. This one won't load now, so there's something not quite right here. Oh, there's the doom effect <laughs> and the the fiery logo. I love the logo. Actually, it looks <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, memes. My crazy website about memes. If I go to Gene, I think they're using GPT two uh, combined with Wikipedia to generate uh, the text. Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I see that. Now. Yeah, it's a bit slow now. That uh, I don't know why, but wow, that's a creepy uh, picture. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to meet that bird. That's terrifying. Uh, so it, it's struggling to load the text in now, and uh, I guess it's like running worse and worse uh, for some reason. Hmm. I'm gonna try to actually restart because it feels like Be the sure performance that is you're, degrading. Uh, not, uh, I'm not restarting that. Massive, no. yeah. mm. Sorry. <laughs> if there's a massive memory leak or something going on, make sure that you're not losing the stream. Yeah, and then there may be um, because this isn't. There's something really bad happening when I leave this running if I've clicked uh, enough links. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is a cool idea, this uh, procedurally generating content in like old internet style. Uh, super fun yeah, idea. I, I, I like the, uh, the the technical solution to that. So it's, yeah. uh, it's not only about the website itself, but it's also about how you generate using yeah. language models. Uh, yeah interesting sort of natural language process they added in <laughs> yeah and it's using tensorflow so that's interesting uh it's uh yeah here we let's see. yeah mm -hmm. i didn't actually see how they use it or look into the code itself too much yet see see some of the gpt2 stuff though hmm all right um yeah very impressive yeah, no, so that's cool. Um, and I suppose um, we're, um, we've gotten through all of the projects. Uh, wow. <laughs> what do you think, Kyle? Some good stuff? Yeah, it's very good stuff. Um, I don't know how if, if I should start talking about contenders or some of my favorites yet before the, we go into it. No, but, we'll do uh, that after the break, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, right. um, I mean, you, yeah, no. well, we can... Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's some pretty good projects overall. Yeah, no, I'm very impressed by the, uh, the scope of some of these projects. They definitely went beyond my expectation, I guess, of the usual uh, code jam scope, given the limited time frame to make it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so should we then take a short break um, to figure out... Uh, the winner and the runners up and then um we'll come back yeah no it seems like a good idea to me yeah we should do that all right all right guys um 
then I will send you back to the intermission screen for, let's say, what do you want? Half an hour? And or remember, guys, 20. if you have any questions, be sure to ping Daniel Brown yep. slash Lord Hemlock. Mr. Hemlock, geez. And I will absolutely get those questions out to them. Yeah. And this is your last chance to do that. So uh, leave questions so with can, Hemlock uh, during the break. Let's do a 25-minute break and come back um, a quarter to. That sound okay? Uh, yep. That's it. Wait, wait, that 20 right. minutes is what I meant. 20 Works minutes is that quarter to. Yeah. We can do this in 20 minutes, right? Yeah, it's 20 Good. minutes is plenty. Okay. All right. See you guys in 20 minutes. Yep. See you soon. Fuck ton of noise 
as he destroys the underground.
to know the hard escape from wretched sorrow Permit an ambush by your conquered woe Give not a windy night, a rainy morrow Just take it slow, 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 slow Do not a heart is posed by wretched sorrow Continue to employ an overthrow Give not that windy night its rainy morrow Go slow, 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 slow When all the petty griefs have done this by At first the very worst of fortunes might When everything it seems is wrought with woe Compared with loss of you will not seem so
battle to climb up the ranks Shooting to kill But only shooting blanks Filling up on coolant Replacing bad parts It's time for a fight That's completely off the charts among the judges and figured out who we think the winner and the runners up are and we're excited uh, to share it in and out a bit sorry you're cutting in and out a bit cutting in and out hmm yeah it's better now that you screwed closer. i think that's only yeah, you on your closer. end though and not on the stream probably so that's fine oh, fair enough because the stream's getting my direct microphone feed oh, okay. you know um 
Right, so yeah, we, we've seen some really interesting projects and uh, we want to talk about the three that we found to be the best out of the yes. ones we've shown to you now. Yep. So let's just get started on um, third place. The second runner up is a project by the team Mysterious Mice called Spacebook. So um, this project, uh, you want to talk a little bit about what this was, by the way, Kyle? Yeah, so effectively this was a uh, social media site uh, in Mars, they were supposed to be, um, effectively, and it had a very nice aesthetic appeal to it with like an animated background and, you know, some the usernames named after, um, you know, like uh, some of the like curiosity and rovers and such um and it had a very sort of uh facebook or not facebook uh, myspace sort of vibe to it and had an interesting text-based ga adventure game uh on the site yeah lots of features it yeah. looked good it had the animated background it felt very uh old what do yes. you think Beth? Yeah, I, I think it was really nice. Uh, I like that they used the, uh, the 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 NASA API to get the current weather on Mars. I think that's a <laughs> yeah. nice touch to have. And to even integrate uh, that into the game, it's a really fun. Yeah, idea. That's, yeah that's, that's cool that as well. Yeah, yeah very clever. Um, for so, me, it was all about like how complete the project was. It felt like uh, like it had everything that that project needed to have in in, in such a short time to come together. But something so cohesive. It's very impressive. It's not something we typically see. We usually see like, well, you have one or two features that work really well, and then there are a couple of things that are kind of broken. But this was a site that really worked well, and everything just did what it should do, except the only thing they didn't have was the signing in and the logging uh, in with the making your profile kind of things, I guess. But uh, it wasn't really necessary. You could still sign the guest book as a guest. It makes sense to me. Yep. Um, I don't think they probably didn't plan to have that feature anyway. Yeah, the main thing, though, really, I would say that it could have expanded further upon was usability within the the in browser game that the site kind of revolved around, almost was you mm -hmm. know with giving the user more guidance as far as like directing them towards interesting things, so you don't yeah. just end up in the situation like Lemon did where you just go in one direction six steps in a row into the same message yeah yeah yeah, yeah. now the game um, probably maybe if I had played it the way that the programmers had intended <laughs> you know yeah. why did you go north you should have gone south <laughs> <Never been>. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot <laughs> uh, you know but if I had gone the right direction I'm sure I would have discovered some stuff um, and uh, yeah um, so that's probably the only complaint that I had as well is that the game wasn't exactly super fun, but the yeah. idea is great, and I really like the fact that they've uh, strung the, put it all together into yeah like a nice cohesive whole, a nice project all together. Yes. So happy! I'm I'm very happy with this number three in our in our list. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, excellent. Um, we'll, so uh, uh, we'll move on to talk about the the second, uh, the first runner up as well, um, which uh, after my, this was hard for us because we really we very had two difficult. very good contenders. We talked the entire time we were gone off the stream. Now we were talking about who should get second place and who should get uh, the other. You know, like uh, the order is very difficult to decide. But after much deliberation, we decided that we would give uh, the second place first runner-up to the alligators was the full team name something um uh, annoyed, al annoyed, annoyed yeah. alligators that's yeah. right they made <laughs> <laughs> they made this um social media site that you could navigate and input terminal commands into so you had the terminal at the bottom and the social media site uh open so that you could like scroll to the next page or s send messages to other users and create new posts from terminal input. A very, very interesting and novel idea. And this is the reason that we gave it the second place uh, over the space book is that we felt the novelty of the idea and the creative part of this project was so strong. Uh, you know, it's something that you've never seen before. And we've said that in our judging criteria that we want to put an emphasis on the creative 
side of things. We want to talk, you know, the, the best idea should win, essentially. And then execution and performance and so on, that's just a nice bonus. But uh, we want people who, even beginners who are participating in this event, to have some way forward to win these uh, competitions. Not that I'm saying that the annoyed alligators are beginners. Um, <laughs> it was fairly competent, I believe. I think all of the people who made it to this top nine had uh, decent code quality. So, um, uh, but but this was a very good idea. What do you think, uh, yeah. Vess? Yeah, so I'm I, I'm really happy with this uh, command line version. Uh, I really enjoy playing around with a command line myself, um, and seeing it in in a, some some sort of hybrid uh, GUI website with a command line to to, to interact with it is is very cool. Um, so yeah, I really like that. Uh, the aesthetics for me that they fit my experience or my memory of the early internet days perfectly. Um, this is what the internet used to look like. And, and yeah. That's very cool. So, uh, yeah, I think they're a very worthy number two in, in our summer code jam. And Kyle, what do you think? Yeah, I know. I definitely think it was a very novel idea. And in general, the had as far as the baseline functionality of the command line, it basically included all of the features you would want for that site. Um, and the, the help messages were actually useful and fully there for each of the individual commands, which definitely helps usability perspective. Yeah, nice. So that's uh, that was our uh, two runners up. Before we go on to tell you um, the winner, uh, yep. we'd like to uh, take a minute to talk a little bit about the event, the prices and our sponsors as well. Uh, Vess, maybe you can say a few words about that. So before we're going to announce the winner, it's it's important to mention that we do have a few prizes for the winners. Uh, we basically have a pool of uh, five hoodies, five t-shirts, and five JetBrains any product licenses. So that means you can pick your own product uh, for which you want to license. And the way this is going to work is that the winners get the first pick, so they can pick either a hoodie or a t-shirt or a license. And then uh, the price pool moves down to the second and the third spot, and they can have their picks uh, afterwards. Um, but these prizes uh, are obviously not free, and we're very happy that we've got some sponsorship. So uh, I'd like to thank the Django Software Foundation, which is the organization behind Django itself. Uh, they sponsored us, uh, which makes it possible for us to put up these uh, hoodies and these t-shirts. Um, I'd also like to thank JetBrains, uh, uh, which very kindly provided us with these licenses uh, we can use as prizes for you. And obviously, and, and we literally cannot do this without you, uh, our patrons uh, over at our Patreon page, um, without their contributions, we couldn't uh, send out all these excellent uh, hoodies and, and stuff. So I'd like to thank our, our uh, patrons as well. Um, that's what we use to to do this kind of stuff yeah so thanks everyone yeah that's really uh really lovely that people are willing to put some money into making these kinds of events happen um and uh, maybe uh, uh hemlock maybe you can put uh, the patreon link in the chat as well i will do that even uh, already be in the video description as well even a dollar is uh, helpful because it uh, might be another uh, T-shirt that we can get for the winning teams, um, so that uh, we can inspire yeah. people to take the step into working with, you know, like with unknown strangers in a team to build something like this. It's it's a really good learning experience. It's something that you can't get from most code jams or game jams out there on the web, because most of the time yeah. you, you'd be left to your own devices to find a team or people to work with. Um, the thing that's unique about our code jam is that we put you in a team with some other people, and that allows you to sort of get your feet wet in in a sort of open source way of thinking. And if you want to contribute to an open source project, you're going to have to work along with other people who you don't know. you got to get, get used to that. Get out of your comfort zone and, and start working with strangers. It's part of the magic. Yeah, and definitely from experience in that domain, it's honestly far more about learning to communicate with other developers mm -hmm. and learning how to work with other people than it is just solely about writing code <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, programming is uh, the art of communication 
Yeah. In many <laughs> ways. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> who's <laughs> winning? Communicating with people, communicating with computers. It's all the same. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we have uh, a winner to announce. I'm sure some of you uh, would be able to guess. Drum roll, please. <laughs> As requested, and here's a drum roll. Winner. Here, I actually am putting a drum roll on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of this year's Python Discord Summer Code Jam 2020 is the uh, Juicy Jaguars with their Web95 application. You see it on the stream right now. It's a emulation of uh, Windows 95 uh, sort of uh, interface where there's a fully functional browser. And in this browser, we can actually browse to real websites that are then parsed with Python and where custom CSS is injected to make it look old by modifying <laughs> the actual projects th themselves yeah. rather than writing like custom yeah. HTML for this project. This is a phenomenal idea. Yeah, I'm completely blown away by the functionality. And like this was probably the most unanimous part of the judging process. I think there wasn't a single one of us that didn't pick this as our number one. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Yeah. yeah. No, we so, were all incredibly uh, yeah. impressed by it. Yeah. It's really impressive. Uh, uh, so, so when I first uh, saw this application, I thought, well, okay, it's nice, Windows 95. Uh, I know there are a couple of frameworks out there that you can use to recreate that. Uh, but then when you actually start using it and you, you visit our own website, for instance, Python Discord, and you, you see your own website like it, uh, the way it would have looked uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's something I did not expect. Yeah, it completely blindsided me as well. Um, I'm wondering how it renders my personal website. <laughs> wow, you have a very interactive website. Uh, it, yes, that's exactly. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, uh, it <laughs> doesn't show the background. The theme of switching was a nice little add-on <laughs> too, as well as all of the individual Easter eggs. <laughs> very creative. Yes, and I. Oh course, man, the Mother Russia. 1995, Mother Russia, and the nice little Rickroll. I chose the same yeah. one, of course. Yeah, I keep choosing the theme that I already have. Let's see. Vapor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then uh, I'm going to... Uh, you get different wallpapers depending on what theme you have. <gasps> Interesting. That's amazing. Huh. Now I have to check That's all the... That's something we completely missed earlier, too. Yeah, didn't you see that? Oh, this is the actual yeah. wallpapers that were available for... Uh... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> God damn. That's great. Oh, they nailed wow. this. This is so good. They really... Yeah, like, just everything about this is just incredibly well fleshed out and creative and just really goes... Takes the theme and just went completely above and beyond with it. <laughs> yeah. I think that... Um, uh, we have to um, take a second and, and just let the Mother Russia uh, feature play out. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to lower, lower your volume. I'm, I'm going to lower the, the stream volume when I do it. So uh, you should not have to be completely blasted by all the sound here. So let's see. There we go. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I, I nobody can hear anything that you guys are saying now. I love that it changes the theme as well in this animated background here. It is so much fun. <laughs> Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn the volume back up. So then, um, <laughs> oh no, no, I mean, um, I, I, I. Res oh, okay. Yeah, no, without. Oh, the and also Russia. too, just like in full, um, old Internet Explorer experience. Of course, we got the pleasure of some sites being broken. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. cool. Excellent work, guys. Uh, this is just such a cool project. And we may see what we can do about uh, giving it a permanent home on pythondiscord.com, maybe. Yeah. 
there was some talk of that and if someone's willing to take on the project and our staff then we'll probably allow that to be a thing uh, somehow or other yeah so so that's interesting we'll have to see how that works out yeah yeah maybe after yeah it depends a little on resource use and stuff like that too but we'll look into it at least because it would be fun yes. if this website got to be somewhere permanently so that people can actually visit yeah. and use it no, i think yeah. that would definitely be a good yeah, so we'll investigate that. So uh, congratulations. Uh, we will be in touch to get you guys set up with hoodies and t-shirts. Uh, and um, thank you so much for participating in this event. Um, we'll be releasing a video on our YouTube later, um, which is like a, a, a summing up the different uh, projects. These uh, the top nine projects. Uh, we'll do a little bit like a highlights video, a short 10 minute thing. Um, so yep. look out for that as well. Um, Hemlock, do we have any last questions in the chat before we run this off? Uh, no, I don't believe so. We've been pretty much covering everything as we go, and uh, our mods have been taking care of any questions as well. I think so nothing, uh, nothing big for the presenters. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Vess, any last words? Uh, yes, I would just like to thank everyone involved, in, including all the volunteers that you don't see in the stream or, or here active. There were a lot of people involved in reviewing and, and helping out during the uh, uh, qualification phase as well. So I'd like to thank all the volunteers and all the participants. I yeah. think that's really important. And a special thanks to Kyle for joining us on the stream. I really appreciate no taking the all. time for this. Glad to be here. Super interesting to hear about your, uh, your journey to core dev. Uh, hopefully everyone yeah. found it as interesting as I did. Yeah. And with that, and thanks to Hemlock for running the chat, dude. We can't do this with, without everyone involved. That's very nice of you. Um, I think that we're going to round it off there. And uh, thank you all for uh, watching. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye, guys.